snow goose, and you're going to go fix your spread over there. So you're going to walk to where Mr. Dana's going to show you. There's an empty stake over there. You're going to put your snow goose on his stake. You're fixing your decoy spread. Yeah, you're going to have to take the chip jar. Get started at that time. At that time, bird two. Bird two, stand up and wave at me. Come out of the deep holding blind. The two cameras and the one in the middle back. Okay. At the edge of the pond. Is he up? He, I never, he never stood up. Bird two, stand up and wave at me. Bird two. Okay, that other one. There's bird two. You're gonna get a, is it a mallard? Yeah, a mallard thrown yeah. left to angle back right, landing in the green in the water. Splash. Water. You'll get a splash. You will shoot that bird. Bird two will come from the next hole. Or bird three. Bird three, stand up, wave in. Bird three. Cameraman, he's gonna be there the whole time. He's gonna be behind the line. Okay. Bird three is throwing right to left. A flasher on a string that would flash and get pulled back in. Bird four, stand that way then. We, we, we shoot that one. You shoot that one. Okay. We shot twice. We shot you twice. shot twice at this point. You sure shoot those two birds. Bird four is coming out behind that Indian grass, deep of the snow goose, right to left. Bubba will shoot that bird. You can see the ribbon over wow. there. That's where we're aiming for. There will be two shots back. of that bird, one from each bubble. Can we point that gun out? You can point. You, can point you have your gun to point but that you gun. Don't You're shoot just that. not shooting. So far. After that bird hits the ground. Bird five. Stand on Bird five comes from the cedar tree. And that is a flasher thrown right to left. Have him stand from there. Hey, bird five, stand, walk out of your hide over there. This is where we can see you. Walk out, step out. All right, right there. Now wait. When you see that bird come out with a flasher, it's a big, pretty throw. All right. You shoot two, three, and five. <laughs> and Bubba shoots the other. Three. Two, three, five. But you can point. You can feel point. free to point that gun, that bird out. All right. After the test dog, you can. Once all your marks are on the ground, pick up one mark. Have a break. Pick up one mark that is not the poison bird. Everybody good with that? You can pick up any mark that is not the poison bird. Once you receive one mark, run your blind. The blind. See the orange pole up there. Pole out there. Everybody see it? There is a 50 point penalty for not hitting the slot in Snow Geese. Snow Geese decoys out there, but to the keyhole. Everybody good with that? Once the dog has returned with the blind, pick up your mark in any order except for the poison bird you never pick up. So white bird three you never pick up. There's a 100 point penalty for picking up any bird, so you pick up one mark for picking up any other mark before you blind. That includes the poison. That includes the poison bird. If you pick up the poison bird, or like this left one, let's say, you have to come back and run the blind again, and you've already been scored on all of them. Does that make sense? 
No deer feet that If you pick up the boys first, or I'm not, Still got to run your blind. All right. Any questions? Mark on the hill. Are they pulling up that call? They are not. They but are you not. can. Are you're here as, with your dog, and you can point it out. Yes. But while the marks are coming out, you're hunting beside your dog. But once the marks are out and you see them, you can do whatever you want to do. Alright, here's where the, the dog coming out of the hut. Once you put the dog in the hut the first time. So you put him in one time, right? If he comes out at any point during that time before you come back over here to load your gun, and what we, we mean by out is off, off, or if you got two feet out in the front, you're okay. If any one of the back feet come out, that's considered out. We want both back feet in the hide to be considered in. Does that make sense? So, you put the dog in, at any time if he comes out while you going to get the, put your decoy out or coming back, it's 25. All right, so you put him back in to start the test. If he comes out at any point during that time, it's 25. But, like, you only put him in there twice, and there's uh, there's no reason for, like, freebies or anything, because once you put him in, if he comes out, then... So I can take 25 points down. So he's asking, he's asking, can I take 25 points and just have my dog sit on the left and never put him on the second?
right, we're going to move the chair on the other side. Now put the Yeti bucket over there. Put, leave, your, leave the dog hide where it is. No. dog has to be in the hut, we start to set. You come out, anytime you come out in those two time periods, it's going to stop. If he was out the whole time, that's the whole thing. You can bring him out. But until the last bird's down, you got to stay in the hut. But after the bird, the last bird's down, you can stand up and do what you send your dog. No, if he comes out the first time while you're out with the decoy, he, he stays out. You don't come put him back in. Then you see the mark from over there. If he will. But you got to know that once you put that decoy there, marks are coming out. Watch the test dog and then we can have some more. You talk about taking him out anyway? No, he needs to start the test in the house. If you can't get him in there, then we can. It's happening. Have a dog. We'll discuss that during the test dog and answer that question.
Good deal. Here we go. Guns up. Guns up. PB ready? Ready? Yeah, All right. Matt, we're good. We're going to watch the first guest dog here. All right, here we go. Dogs in the line. We're going to two test dogs, right? Matt. Right, is that guy standing there going to be there the whole time? Hey, no, you, you throw from behind your hide, okay? Or five. You get behind your hide, you throw from behind your hide. I told him to walk out a minute ago. Okay. So this guy, I think he's talking about this guy. Now. Sit. Camera. Sit. Not, not during the... Stay still, there's some coming in. Well, obviously they're going to stop them. But if they can't stop them, then they're going to make them. Yeah, it's a control. You can tell them before they get started. We're going to call them. I have an observation. What I want to have is they get home.
No, once he picks it up. No, hey, hey, hey! Hold up. I, I told Don't do that on this one, okay? We'll wait till after the dog finishes, and I'll tell you when to put it back. But thank you. Y'all don't want one there every time you have to go back. No.
Hey, stay there. There's birds coming in. Thank <laughs> you. 
questions guys <laughs> all right good luck to you guys line them up
Thank you. Hey, I didn't miss. Yes, sir. Marty, please don't let me forget my gun. Don't look at my lap. My lap was in the kitchen. That ain't my lap. Okay. <laughs> what did it take? What did it take? He's just like, 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 he's
the water blind, I get it. And, and I just went to somebody and I said, you can build every training pond you ever want, but there's no substitution for a dog having to go into big water. Amen. And Amen. that's what you're gonna see. They gotta cast into a fairly substantial piece of water. And that, that's hard without these poison birds, let alone with them. And then you've got a couple of other factors that come into play here too, Pat. If you take a look at the screen there, you can see in your top. Top left hand screen, wind's really, really blowing. Oh yeah, look at the Got a lot of factors here. Test about to begin. Yep, absolutely. About to begin. Uh, stick with us here in a moment. And then the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship Finals will begin momentarily. takes a dog that not only hit, can do what we do for training, but a dog that hunts. The old days of being really good at one side or the other and kind of waffling through the, the side that you're not good at are, are, are done. You've got a lot of work to go in to get there. And if you're somebody that's gonna get your feelings hurt easily, if it doesn't go well, this, this probably isn't a great game for you. You know, these dogs have got to hunt to have that experience to be able to handle some of the situations that we get put in. This is not a young dog game, <laughs> and if you're gonna be if you're going to be good at SRS, you better be good at something else. You better be really good at field trials. You better be really good at hunt tests. But if you absolutely love training your dog and working with your dog and trying to get better as a team, and you're someone that likes to perform at a high level, then this is a perfect game for you. They might not be great field trial dogs. Now, almost every one of them are great hunt test dogs. But all around, from A to Z, these guys are the best. And here we go with the fifth and final series of the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship presented by Yukonuba. As I said a few moments ago, everyone, hello, my name is David Hamilton and I am joined today by J. Paul Jackson and Pat Burns. And guys, we are down to the final 12 dogs, six amateurs, six pros. We've had a week full of competition, almost 100 dogs qualified for the crown. You know, we've seen Series 1 was a, a hunt test, Series 2 was a field trial, Series 3 was a, a land and water kind of hunt savvy test, Series 4 was a hybrid uh, field trial hunt test, and then here today, another hunt savvy test, and, and Jay Paul, just tell us all about this test that we have for these 12 dogs. Well, let me tell you something, we've got quite a test here, we've got a lot of action. Uh, if you really want to understand the test, you better grab a sharp pencil and a piece of graph paper, maybe even a protractor, because that's how much is going on here. It all starts with the handler walking out into the test. Now, the setup is you're hunting with a couple of companions. We've got a Thor Boats Lake Hammer 1754 sitting here. You can see it there in the picture. Bubba and Bubette, our Bubba Gunners, are there in the boat hunting along with you. Handler walks up. There is a ground blind for the dog or a dog hide. Judges have instructed you to put the dog in the hide and we're gonna start calling. Birds are gonna start working. They're gonna call continuously for about 10 seconds. Just like in regular hunting though, a lot of times the ducks just don't finish. Bubba's gonna ask our handler to make an adjustment to the decoys. The handler's gonna grab a decoy, walk out to the snow geese, put another snow goose out there on a stake. Once the handler gets there, the action's gonna resume. Bubba's gonna tell him, hey, hey, here they come, stay down. Happens all the time when we're out duck hunting. So, handler's gonna freeze in place, do a little bit of calling. Bird one's gonna come out. Bubba gunner's gonna shoot. It's gonna splash. Handler's gonna come back over. They're gonna tell him, come on, come on, some more about to come in. At that point, he loads up three shells from our second gun station. Another bird comes out. This one just splashes out in the water. After that, we're gonna have 
Another bird come out over on the hill. Another mark is going to come out again. They're going to shoot at it. It's going to splash in the water. This bird is going to be a cripple and try to start swimming away. And then finally, our last bird out comes back out up on the hillside over here to the right. Handler's going to shoot that bird and then release the dog. At that point, the dog can go and pick up any of the marks that have been thrown, with the exception of the water mark that comes in the middle. You cannot pick that bird up. If you do, it's a hundred point penalty. The dog is going to come back, and here's the reason why you can't pick it up because that bird is a poison bird. You're going to turn around and you're going to run the blind right past that bird. But now, Pat, here's the kicker <laughs> it's a poison bird, but in this case, it is not automatic elimination if the dog picks that bird up. It is, however, a hundred point penalty. And if you do pick it up and route to the blind, you've still got to come back and run the blind again. Start it all over again. After that, the dog's going to turn from the blind, and then you're going to clean up the rest of the mark, and the test is done. Were you able to follow all that? Wow. All right. Let me, let me, let, let me see if I got this right. I get the beginning. The dog's in the, in the blind hut. You walk out to make an adjustment in the decoys. As soon as you put a decoy, make your adjustment, this bird at about, what, 40 yards? Gets shot on the right. You, you as a handler, come back to where your dog is. Let's make sure I got the order right. The far left-hand bird is shot next. Correct. When does the poison bird get shot? I thought it was right after that, no? Let's make sure we understand that order, because I was confused. It goes, obviously, the short bird You are right. exactly right. The left-hand bird comes out first. The middle splash comes out. Which is, the, a, the which is our poison bird. That's the only bird we don't pick up. both of those. Bird to the right on the hill then comes out and you do not shoot it. And then the hammer shoots the last bird down oh, and sends the dog. okay. And the last bird down is the longest mark of the test. It is. But to pick it up, you've got to run right past the bird that came out first and splashed in the water. And another element that I left out, the dog can come out of the hunt without being disappointed back in the hut, it's a 25 point penalty. So, I, I, I get it, you know, there's a lot of stuff. I tell you, what I'm most comfortable with, or at least what I'm more familiar with, is that water blind. And neither test dog swam to the water blind. And I was watching them from an aerial photo. And when they came up over the top of the spit, saw the big water, they hunted the edge of the water. I, I don't think the handler could see them doing that a lot, could they? No, I came up there and actually watched the test dogs. And there is a point where your dog disappears with all these factors. Uh, we saw both of them pop back up and the handler can't see the dog until it got very, very dry. What's likely to happen? You know, you've got to pick up the bird, the blind. Are they going to, at what point do you insist they get back in the water? Or what point do you, would you just complete the blind? resigning yourself that you're not going to swim to it. If you're asking me personally, I want my dog to be wet. I'm going to handle hard to put that dog back in the water. But from my standpoint watching this test, I think that you're going to see some guys that choose to just go on and run that bank. They're going to try to survive. They're going to get their dog to that bird any way that they possibly can. And here's the other thing that you've got to think about. And this is the reason I really, really like this test. This is about as realistic a hunting scenario as you're ever going to find. I mean, there's a lot of realism to this test. I can tell you, I hunt 40, 50, 60 days every duck season all over the country. I've been put in this situation many times. A lot of times, you get up to go adjust something in the decoys, birds in the air, they see that movement, they key in on it, and boom. You know, before you know it, you're out in the decoys and your buddies are telling you, get down, get down, get down. It really happens all the time. Also. Hunter dogs out of dog blinds all the time. You know, birds are totally unpredictable. You never know what's going to happen in hunting. So this test, there's a lot of realism here. It's truly a hunt savvy test. Pat, um, all week you've had your drone out here and you've actually been, you know, flying your drone during the test dogs. We've had two test dogs here today while our handlers were watching it. Was there anything you could see from up above that uh, you think might be an additional challenge for these competitors? Or do you think there's any part of the test where there's some terrain that maybe you can't see from uh, the line there? What did you see when you were looking on your drone? 
The most significant thing I noticed is that waterboard. That is, it's a deal breaker there. And mainly because the dog comes over the top of that spit. He's got to go between two birds that he's seen thrown. The left hand bird and which it, and the poison bird. I would, I think the, even the best trained field trial dogs of the highest level would really struggle with this. And uh, well, I, I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know how to even plan a strategy. So I'm gonna rely on Jay Paul and these handlers to show me what they're gonna do. I'm, this is gonna be amazing. Well, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of action to follow and I'm not as quick as I used to be. So hey, <laughs> if you rely on me, I hope I don't let you down, brother. A couple things though that I would like to point out. Uh, the way the wind is, I mean, you saw it, you see the fountain out there with it blowing, the way it's blowing away from us there. You've got a lot of scent factors coming in here too. As you said, the dog has to swim between both of these marks. When you go past the left-hand bird, there's gonna be a point where the dog should be able to win that bird. More importantly, with the wind at our backs, if the dog goes over that levee and pops out to the right at all, sucking toward that ground, which we've seen several of them do, they're gonna win that bird. They're gonna get a nose full of that poison bird. I think that's the reason why the judges did not make it an automatic DQ. Right. As you saw with the first test dog that we ran, dog went over the levee, as you said, sucked back over to the bank, got a nose full of the bird. If that dog had been in contention, it would have taken that 100 point penalty. Absolutely, and I'll tell you, the strategy I've seen handlers use that I'm not familiar with is that firm here command when they're trying to get a cast. Well, you don't dare do it in that situation because you're gonna reel them right into the poison bird. So, I'm just gonna sit back here and watch like everybody else is and just see what happens. While we're waiting for the first dog to come to the line, just talk to us about the whole week. You've been here, Pat. I mean, I, I, I literally I've been blown away. Uh, uh, up until this test, <laughs> Everything I've done, like, oh, okay, I could do, I could see that in any normal day of training with a few different variations. This is totally different. And, uh, well, you, I learn something every time I watch dogs. I'm going to learn a lot here today. I think we all are, and I think we're in for quite a show. Our first dog to the line, Huck with handler Brian Broussard. They come into the fifth and final series with a four series total of 284. Huck is nine years old. Brian Broussard has been competing with retrievers since 2012. Like so right. many competitors, when asked what got them into the Super Retriever Series, Brian said, back in the day, the great outdoor games was the spark. First bird's down. Poison bird. Don't shoot this in, Brian. Now, Huck qualified for the crown three years ago. Um, Brian was unable to compete because there was a wedding in his family at the time. And then uh, Huck had uh, injuries in his seventh and eighth year of life. So, uh, you know, first year back competing here in three years and makes it all the way to the crown finals. You know, this is something that we used to see a great deal of the time in SRS. That bird is also an eraser bird there. They're throwing that flasher out there. Most of these dogs are gonna see that go bird and they may leave to go and get it. But when they see that flasher laying there on the water, I think we're gonna see most of them do exactly what Hup did and pick that bird up and I tell you, that 
a lot of times kind of erases or wipes out from their memory that long mark up there on the hill. You know, one thing I didn't even talk about is the diagonal entry, the diagonal entry of these, of this initial line. Yeah, it's quite an angle going in there on this initial line. So, you know, you just, you get off on the wrong foot here and you just get, you, it hurts your initial line. But oh. this dog looks, I'll tell yeah, you, this dog's going making the a little move towards the left hand bird, is he not? Which is actually in this instance is a poison bird as well. It's a poison bird that you eventually pick up. And the judge has also told us that the dog picks up that bird. Uh, there is not a disqualification associated with it, but you will definitely be getting the 100 point penalty for it. And you also, since it is a mark, it'll be treated as a handle to the area of the okay. fault and all of the subsequent whistles, everything associated with that, you're gonna be scored on. So, yeah, yeah it's gonna be bad to pick it up either way. And you're still gonna have the right hand poison bird oh, I mean, I'm, out there too. I don't even know where to begin. I don't know what question to ask first. But I'm gonna move and make sure I see this because this is where it's gonna get hairy. Well, you can see the poison bird right here. Yeah, and the dog can't too. What about <laughs> going left of the left decoy? What does that do to you? There's definitely a penalty associated with it. Did you, did you catch? Okay, well, he's not going to do that. Boy, he I almost did hear like that there was a penalty, but I didn't know how many faults it was going to be. Correct. We will find that out. We will find that out. We'll let you know exactly how much. Well, he went kind of through the slot. With that. There's nowhere I'm going to go to see this. I have my drone up. I could see this dog here. <laughs> the suspense right here is like, oh, there he showed up in the right corner. Yep. Oof. Where they all have it. Look at this. Now he's winning that bird. And as everyone watching at home can also see with the trees blowing there, maybe even hear the wind on our microphones, these uh, handlers and dogs are, are, are also dealing with quite a bit of wind here today. Well, there you go. All right, now, so here's... So to answer your question, Pat, again, personally, I'm going to try to get that dog back in the water, but I think we're going to see a lot of guys who aren't going to fight them too much. Well, I mentioned when you walked away, I said, I, I would have, a lot of handlers would have said, here, brought them in and mate, but you don't dare do that because you bring them right into the poison bird. Amen. Are we going to start betting again? <laughs> so, somebody asked me if we were going to have an over-under. Apparently people are really, really enjoying that. Well, one. I don't even, I, I'm... I, I said, yeah, we'll have it. They said, are we going to have an over-under on how many pick up all of these marks clean? And I said, yeah, it'll be 0.5. <laughs> I was going to say, yes. For those of you who are just tuning oh, in today, well, yesterday something, they had wait, a, a minor happened. little wager here, uh, a, a beer uh, on oh. over-under of how many dogs picked up one of the birds clean yesterday. Well, he got it up for a minute. I thought they didn't have a blind down. I looked and the dog went over the top of the hill. And, uh, but he got it. Yes, I don't. We've done that pretty much every day, David, <laughs> while you were here. Well, yeah, somebody asked uh, who bought whose beer. I said oh, they both, he does he not, does not have, have, have a bird. Well, now what do you do? Because I think there was, there's not a blind down. But now he's gonna. Hmm. I think this is the hardest part. I, I, I'm just only going to assume there's not a bird down. The hardest part is a judge. How do? You, so how do he you, did not. He thought he'd pick up the blind. He had the dog did not have the bird. He, he was coming back without the bird. Correct. Yeah, but, uh, but let's see it right now. Look at the blind planters running out. Is there a bird down? Ooh, there was not a bird at the blind. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's what I'm. I watched him put his head down at the stake. What do you do? I mean, how do you... Well, the judges are conferring right now. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of discussion about what you do here on this deal. Yeah, because if you're Brian, you're saying, look, if he had the blind in his mouth coming back, he wouldn't have picked up that poison. Can I, can I right tell here. you what I think? Yeah. Here's my... You're scored to the blind as was. Hey, Amen. When he put his head down on the marker, you're scored. Mm -hmm. But you've got to rerun this dog now. Actually, and I, don't you've, I don't think you've even got to rerun him. He just made the retrieve. Let him but roll. The poor, but the... He's judged up to the point of interference, of unfairness, which is when he got to the stake and there wasn't a bird there. When he came in, he picks up the poison bird, which is not under judgment in my opinion, but it does affect him moving forward in the test. 
But he, but how? Because if he if, so if there had been a bird at the blind and he already had a bird in his mouth, he can't pick up the second one at the same. We're going to know. We're going to know right now. He's talking to the judges. <laughs> oh. Pat, I think if anything, you, you you do exactly what you said. You score him to the point where he reached the stake. There's no penalty associated with picking yeah, that bird up. You have the bird boy go and put another bird out Ooh, there. Is he continuing? Because it will con Yeah, I, I, I can totally see this. This is the, I mean, it, the, well, you know, I've done, some, I, I've switching. done some, been involved with some judging seminars, and you talk about all the classic things, but we always have the, when the SHIT happens, and this is when <laughs> SHA, this is just the things, are, uh, this is going to happen. And he's walked offline, so. Is he upset? When the SHTF happens, <laughs> yes. Maybe they don't even know how they're going to manage it. I'm sure that he is upset. And right but it's not so. this dog's fault there wasn't no, a bird no. down there. So. No, absolutely not. So how do you make this fair? I'm guessing you're going to see this dog rerun, scored on two birds, but he's going to have to pick up everything. So what uh, is happening right now under the judge's tent is uh, Marshall uh, Matt Emerson is talking to the judges. Uh, Brian Broussard has walked behind the holding blind. Um, he is not on the course, but he has also not left the course, if we can pan over and see it. So the judges are there. Brian is probably 20 feet behind the holding blind. Uh, Mike Gibson, who's supposed to run next, is uh, conferring with him. So while Brian and Huck are talking to Mike and Blaze, the judges are discussing what we want to do here. Looks like we may have Carol coming down with a Frank. And Carol may be coming dog. down with Frank for another test dog. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Pickup dog. They've got a, a they've got dog. birds in the water. Yeah. They got yeah. to get out yeah. of the water. She's yeah. going to be a pickup dog. Probably going to pick up that left hand mark yeah. if they're going to indeed throw them again and rerun. You know, I can see a couple different ways this could have played out. Guys, while y'all took this over, I'm going to go talk to Matt and figure out what we're going to do. I'll be right back. Perfect. Hey, let us know. Yep. You know, Pat. As a participant in this, I've actually judged uh, a couple of amateurs mm -hmm. here as well. Uh, I can see a couple of different ways that this could play out. Obviously, they've brought a pickup dog down, so I think they're going to rethrow them and rerun it. I would argue you could cont have continued the test and just planted another flasher where that poison bird was. It's going to have the exact same effect. The blind's over. If, Other than that, he's retrieved it once. Other you than know, he's but retrieved it once. That's exactly you can only right. make it as fair as you can. And, right. I mean, you can't turn back the clock. Well, here comes uh, our, our fair yeah, leader. Hey, guys. Uh, just talked with uh, Marshal Matt Emerson. And, uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is they're going to pick up the ones that are remaining here in the series. Then we will run with Mike. And then we will run in order. And then... I believe Huck and Brian will be last to run, so they're going to now move to the back of the line. So the last run of the amateurs? To, yes, of the amateurs. Okay. So uh, that may change, but Matt said when I was just chatting with him a minute ago, it looks like we'll run Blaze, then Waylon, then Cash, then Smokey, then Tex, and then Huck. Gotcha. Yep. You know, and it's really, really unfortunate. I feel for Brian, man. I feel for Brian that this occurred. Yeah, we hate it, but look, stuff happens. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Human error involved all the time and things. But you know what, though? It doesn't affect it doesn't really affect him that much. He's been scored. He's going to get a chance to wait and watch this play out. Thing they can do, which, by the way, these judges have been amazing. They've, they've done, in my opinion, made every decision they've made has been in the fairness factor of the dogs. Yeah. And it looks like they're doing the same thing here. If you do any of this stuff long enough, this is going to happen to you. So you just gotta, you gotta keep your head and take a deep breath and see what happens. But this may not be as big a disadvantage as you think. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you, Pat. I think that you know, Brian's got just as big, good a chance coming back as he had when he started. And about to step the line here is Mike Gibson and Blaze. Uh, they come in with a four series score, 276. Fun fact for you guys. He's talking to Mike, and I didn't realize this, but we double checked it. He is correct. 
We all know that in 2018, Super Retriever Series started having two separate crown champions, uh, two different divisions. Amateurs used to compete with the professionals. In 2018, we have an amateur category and an open professional category. Since 2018, in the amateurs, only two people have won, Ron Anderson and Mike Gibson. Ron won in 2018, Mike won in 2019, Ron won in 2020, Mike won in 2021, Ron won in 2022, so he told Mike, it's up to you to keep our streak going. Tag, you are it, sir. We'll see if it can go Ron, Mike, Ron, Mike, Ron, Mike, or if any of these other competitors can break it and someone else can finally break through here in the amateurs. <laughs> you know, that's a fact that I'd overlooked. That's pretty doggone cool. Yeah. Mike, of course, a four-time uh, crown champion. One in 2009 with Shady, one in 2015 with Jeter, and then one in 2019 and 2021 with Trigg. Half the challenge is remembering what to do. Yeah. <laughs> As a handler, like what do I, what bird do I shoot at? What do I do next? You Quite. get excited and it's easy to forget the order of things on a conventional test, let alone this. Do you like this test? I mean, I'm, it's wow. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you're right, it is, it is cl classic hunting scenario. Don't shoot this one. They've got a nice comfortable chair for me here, but I I just don't see me sitting down. I'm jumping around like I would be at a football game. Yeah, I can't sit either right now. <laughs> Once again, the dog's gone out and picked up the first bird out instead of the mark up on the hillside. Well, here, this is a good look at the diagonal entry factor. You know, you've got to kind of run by the water early and then slice in at, a, at an angle. And that's, that's always a tough initial line to get. You can see him working it. Yeah, he's really working hard. I think he's using that leg to kind of block also, push that dog back to the left. You know, sometimes in these situations, a line at that right end poison bird is not a lot, bad line as long as the dog will handle off of it. Amen. Tia, Blaze has taken a really, really nice line here. It looks like he's carrying it on out extraordinarily well. You're asking yourself, does this dog know he's running a blind? I'm sure he does. But I, I ask myself that? that every time. He has just glanced at that bird a couple times over there in the right-hand corner. You can see it clearly there. Well, he's swimming in a kind of measured, disciplined-looking pace. Yeah, I, I believe this dog. But the right. minute minute you see him get on this dike, you're going to learn a lot. He 100% knows he's running the blind just by the way he's swimming. I, I really believe that. When do you blow this whistle? Right there. Okay. Yeah, yep. The dog sometimes they'll come back up and look for you, which he is did. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. But see, there's just so much suction. Well, he gave, he gave a silent left diagonal and got the dog back in the water. We think the longer you don't see him, probably the more likelihood he's swimming. You know what I always told my handlers? Look where you don't want to see him. Because <laughs> you, you, you have to, right, which is in his right corner. Because if you can catch him quick, you can save this. I don't know if he can see him. I can't see him yet. Can't see him either. But you're exactly right. If you're looking where you don't want to see him. Oh. Yeah, he swam some. He popped out early on the right. Come back and hunt that edge. 
convertible there. It's a little tricky there. It's kind of a a berm there, and the dogs you just you can't take that for granted. If you get deep of it, you're not going to see the dog. I believe that that is a former. That was a green at one time. It looks like possibly this is a golf course that has been. Ooh, ooh Mike, don't. Sometimes you blow the coming whistle a little too soon, and it's counterproductive. See, you, you realize, oh, I'm still short of this. Okay, I bet you he'll put him on it here. Okay. There we go. Ooh. As a matter of fact, when I first came out and saw the flag there, that's what I thought it was, you know, <laughs> a flag stick on a green. Okay, so we got the blind, we've got the short. What is your strategy? What what is your, what would you anticipate the order of picking up these marks? So me personally, if I'm picking these birds up, you've got three birds you need to pick up now, got right? Three birds I need to pick up. I'm probably going to come back and pick up this right-hand bird on the hill. Second, going to turn. I'm going to come in and I'm going to pick up this bird on the water. Third, and then I'm going to save that one up on the hill for last, where I can run it. I can make a decision then, am I going to run this like a blind or am I going to run it as a mark? Yeah, that is if my dog has picked up that flasher there in the water. Right. If my dog hasn't picked up the flasher in the water on the first bird and went for the go bird, I'm going to be super excited at that point, of course. I'm going to pick up the little mark, water mark in the middle, probably going to turn around and come back to the right and then finish up with the bird on the left. How about you? This left hand bird, I mean, tricky because it's a it's a sharp diagonal entry <clears throat> even you would slice in at a sharper angle than you did in the blind and you still got that poison bird sitting out there that's not very far from this left hand mark hmm well <laughs> Mike's doing exactly what you said he's setting up for the far right hand bird next I think we were watching the test bird you uh, or the test dog you said uh, Pat you were like uh, that poison bird being out there is so dangerous because uh, you used a football analogy. You could be up four touchdowns and still lose the game. <laughs> I know. That's the that is the just the gut wrenching part of the sport. Mm -hmm. One fumble, game over. Yep. So he's gonna go up and get that one up over the hill first. Oh, is it? Is it Oh, he's nope. on the right end. He's on the right end. Right it was a little he's deceiving. Right yep. There was a okay. ATV in our way, but yeah, he's going up to get that one, like Jay Paul said, to get the first one up there to the right, right hand. Mike's setting up for the left bird next. He's yeah. He's going to run in the order Jay Paul said. Right. Yeah, yep. he is. He is. Yep. But I would also be watching these dogs if I were further down in the order. That might influence what I did when I come to one. So right now, that's the way that I would try. I'd do exactly what Mike's doing. But that doesn't guarantee that if I ran later that I would stick with that plan. So he's two-sided. He's electing to run this bird off the right. Why do you think he's doing that, Pat? I'm not a two-sided well, guy. Bird's thrown to the right, but if I'd be awful tempted to run this bird off the left just to emphasize that diagonal in the entry. And once again, get under the arc of the bird. They jump in the water early. There he goes. Uh, <laughs> well, there's your... How about them apples? Yeah, well, he just, he felt that. The dog just told him, wait a minute, I don't like how this look is. This makes more sense to me. Interestingly enough, you know, we always ask all the handlers, what's the strength and weakness of their dog? And Mike said, you know, the strength of Blaze is that he's a very good marking dog. He doesn't get rattled easy, very calm demeanor. He said his weakness, if he has one, is that sometimes he can actually begin his hunt just slightly deep of the mark, so he needs to get him to check up a little sooner if he doesn't step on the mark. Well, he's got one bird to go. Yep. And these marks so far have been near perfect. 
This bird I can see on the ground. Yeah, you got a good throw there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, at it right here I'm not envisioning the dog seeing it, but I can see it. It does give you a, a you can just see a little white spot because it's a light colored bird. Kind of like that mallard that lands belly up in the field trial right. and yeah. you want to tip so, the bird boy. <laughs> but sometimes it uh, never worked for me. Every time I got that bird, it's, I never took advantage of it. Okay, you're angling the channel here as well. See this? They square out to the right there and they'll go to the right of those decoys, but the perfect line slices in and diagonals across the pond. This one you gotta have a little discipline to punch up in the field a little bit. Well, he's punched up in the field. Tell you what, he looked it pretty good. If he'll open his eyes and look left, he'll see it, he just did. Wow. Ooh. Wee. There's nothing like running early and putting the heat on them. Now, there's, I guess the only thing that, there's, there's improvement on the blind, but it'd be hard to be much better on those marks. Now, those are very, very good marks all the way around, yeah. I think that he did a really, really good job of working that dog, too, like you said, on that left-hand mark, Pat, to get the dog in there. So, you know, probably single digit points on the marks. A whole lot of stuff involved in yes. that line. Guys, just got further clarification from Matt Emerson about Huck and Brian Broussard. Huck and Brian will actually run last, not last of the amateurs. They will be the 12th dog to run. He will be judged to the blind. He still has to pick up the blind, but he will be judged to the point like Pat was talking, his score to the blind and then the, from the blind back, we'll, pick, we'll do the rest of the test. Yeah. So, so basically they're keeping his score. Correct. So he won't be judged to the blind on Correct. his rerun. Correct. The judging will The commence. judging will, will commence once he picks up the blind and comes back. Correct. Which is exactly the way, to me, feels like the fair way to do it. Absolutely. And these guys all week have used really good judgment. Tell you, Mike was telling me about his sports background, and he was a pitcher, and the ability to keep your composure at this level—it's huge. The mental toughness factor of Mike makes a lot of sense. Why he's one of the defending champions here. We always say, you're in the clubhouse. We're on a golf course. This is, he can literally be in the clubhouse here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beautiful facility, by the way, here at the uh, WK Palmetto Event Center. And while we're waiting for Waylon and Ernie D'Antoni to walk up to the line, guys, the shreveport Bossier City Sports Commission has been absolutely phenomenal to us all week. Have treated us really well. Great grounds here. and. Uh, I think I speak on behalf of everyone in the Super Retriever Series uh, with a sincere thank you to the Shreveport Bowser City uh, Sports Commission and just uh, the towns in general. All the residents have been great and very welcoming and we're uh, very appreciative to once again have the Crown Championship here. I also want to give a big shout out to Yukonuba, our presenting sponsor. They've done yes. a great job. They've had the uh, tent for the gallery all week long. Of course, fed us, provided monitoring the gallery for everyone to watch. Really appreciative for everything that Yukonuba does for the sport and for the support that they've shown for us here. All right, looks like we've got Ernie and Waylon coming up. Ernie's going to get him in the dog bar. Tinkle, Waylon looks like this is something that's a little bit boring to him. There we go. Got him in. I think Wayland's probably been there before, but I'm willing to bet that it's been a while. All right, here the fun part begins. Now they're telling me, you know what, those birds just didn't finish. Ernie, would you go make an adjustment to the decoy? So he's gonna go and add another no goose decoy to the spread. You see him looking back there at Wayland. Now, it's, Wayland's not disqualified if he comes out, but if he does come out, 
25 20s. point penalty. Got to put him back in, and it's a 25 point penalty. Or at least make the attempt to get him back in. And the judge has said, what are they determining if he comes out? If his front feet come out, it is not disqual or not a 25 point assessment. See. But if his, either of his back legs come out, it is a 25 point assessment. Yeah, he's got to keep both back feet mm -hmm. in that blind. Did a good job there. Bird came in on them. They shot it and put it on the water. Now they've called Ernie back over because some more birds are coming. Now, Ernie is in control at this point. He determines when the next birds are be coming out. He does that by starting to call, and then when he stops to call, the birds will be thrown. Get a good look at the Thor boat there. Interesting fact, Ernie said his first dog's name was also Thor. Cool. So, <laughs> yeah. Over the last couple of years, I've had two or three people send me puppy pictures and say, look at Thor. Big swing to the right. Did Ernie shoot that bird? Yes, he did. I thought he did. Look at the concentration. Now, the judges had instructed the handler not to shoot that bird, but I don't think there's a penalty involved in it necessarily. Yeah, a lot of concentration there as you're looking at that dog. He's See him looking back over at the other marks? By the way, a few minutes ago, the Corps did come over and inform me that there is a penalty for not hitting the slot between the decoys on the blind. If you go to the left or the right and miss that keyhole, you get a 50 point penalty. Remember I said A-S-H-E? I think once you've picked up your first bird, Attitude on this blind is the most critical part of it. You've got to develop a disciplined state of mind to do a disciplined behavior. And the most disciplined behavior is not get the poison bird, but re-enter a large piece of water and swim a long way. Quick reminder, I know many people watch the crown every year, but if, you, if you're not familiar, throughout the crown championship, we've been giving scores in each round. Here in the finals, we will not give score updates until the end, so uh, we will not be giving any of the scores until all the competitors have finished the course. Did a great job, and just had to give it a look there. I think Arnie may have been a little bit late on that whistle, and I'm not sure. Did he say in, as in get in the water? It appears he might be in the water. If anybody can find him, Jim Joe can. Well, he's to the right. He got out really, really quick. We've seen all of them do that. That doesn't surprise me that we saw Waylon really, really go big around yesterday. Mm -hmm. Now, Luke tells me that he's a very watery dog, but We've seen him do this twice now. Yeah. Ernie yelled here, but I think with that big verbal, Waylon heard back because it looked to me like he took off really, really hard. I think he's picked up the bird, though. Yeah, he does have it. Pat, did he get I've it? Got, yeah, he does. I think he's got it now. Yeah, I have a question it. for you, because mm -hmm. my mind's going a million miles an hour here. If you go between the decoys and then cast to the left, and you're actually left of the decoy, but you've gone between them, how does that play out? It's just going to be scored as a whistle and a handle at that point, because you've gone between them. You pass them, and I see what you're saying. You go between the decoys. Cast to the left. And then you cast to the left down that levee to get them further down. And give a right-hand verbal back into the water. Yeah. Would you would you consider doing that at this point? I'd be 
No, I'm not smart enough to figure that out, Pat, to be honest. But if I had thought of it, yes, I would 100% consider it. And I asked you a minute ago, do you think that dog knows he's running a blind? I want to get a whistle or two, even if I'm online, because I want to make sure, A, you're going to get like, to, because when you get that perfect initial line, I'm going to venture to guess that most dogs are wondering, am I looking for a bird or am I running a blind? They may have left the line thinking they're running a blind, but I would like to remind them that I'm up there still. Yes, and I understand that and even agree with that theory, in theory, but here's the thing. Which cast are you going to give? The dog's going down the middle. You don't want to give a left because you got a mark laying out here at the left that's still a poison bird. You don't want to give a right because you're handling toward the poison bird that's visible over there on the bank. If I'm running this test and my dog has the kind of initial line that we saw Blaze have and that we just saw Waylon have, I'm going to let that son of a gun roll. I'm not going to take a chance on casting the dog toward a bird that I don't want them to get. You're going to be hyper vigilant for that change, that little bit of a look around. Now you're not necessarily going to see a crack of a tail because they're swimming, but you've got to remind them, I'm in control up here. Yeah. And I think that's just two different philosophies, you know. I would say this. You ever hear the, the, the guy that jumps out of the Empire State Building? <laughs> it's not the fall that kills you. No, it's no, no. Here's the one. He's flying, he's going down, and he passes the window washers on the 20th floor. And they say, how's it going? He said, so far, so good. When I get that good initial line, I feel like I'm passing the window washers. I've got to, I, I don't care. If I, I'd, I'd stop them, I may cast them left, and I may stop them again, I may cast them with the right verbal, but I'm gonna put some control on them before I need it. I need to find out where their head is before. It's gonna give me an indication of what I need to do at the key point, which is when they get on that dike and they look at a 150 yard swim in front of them. I don't know. And I'm talking as if, I did a lot of coaching in national amateurs, and so this would be the kind of thing I'd be trying to say to my, my handlers. Okay, well it looks like he's got the entry he's looking for. He does? Yeah, but he wasn't so there's really a really good line at all, and I think Mr. Hurry was afraid that he was going to keep on rolling. You know, here's the thing, Pat. can't really blame the dog for that because you've had a mark thrown over there. They've I, seen that bird splash over there. Ooh, 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 what's going on? Is he, he's going for the bird. He's going to get it. Okay, okay, you're right, you're right. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. You know, the dog knows that bird's there. Yeah. He's just swim, He just went by it. He yeah, you're right. Scary. Oh yeah, that, that's a, I think that left mark is a, is a really tricky mark. I think that left bird's a really tricky mark. to the right there. I think he's... Well, he got, he got out there better than I thought. You want to design a good test, all good tests force you to diagonal or angle some factor. Whether it's a road, a hill, a line of cover, a piece of water, or channel in this instance. Every high-end judge looks for angles because dogs want to square, square them. That makes it difficult. Every single time. Question. You know, those two decoys out there, uh, Rody Dress just sent me a text and pointed out that they are there as their corridor. And as such, if you do cast your dog to the left and get it out of there, 
I think it would be a very smart move. But you're going to get penalized. Get, you, more than just the whistle and the handle. Are you going to get more penalized for being that left there or up on land on the right? Or is it going to be equivalent? I don't think it's going to be nearly as bad. <laughs> okay. I think it was a good idea, Pat. Well, I thought it was like a field goal. If you go between the goalposts, it doesn't matter what the ball does afterwards. But I get you. It, so that corridor extends the length of the blind. That corridor extends the okay. length. Okay. I'm sure that you many times held, held your hand up with yeah. your index finger and your pinky up and told your handlers, you know, look at the yes. blind, put it in the middle between those two middle knuckles, and everything inside your fingers is a quarter. You've done that, right? Absolutely. Every, everybody, trainer instructing you. The other thing I'd be looking at is how... Every dog so far been to the right. How far to the right of that corridor is it? And do I have the same lead? If I'm, if I'm that far left, I would think you'd be out in the middle of the pond. So well, Here's the thing. I think it's much easier to get the dog back in the corridor because we've seen, you know, history has shown most of the time in these events when the judges are judging this, if your dog is way over here out of the corridor, you're repeatedly getting dinged for it. You know, so I think that, yeah, Maybe I'm going to take a knock for being out of the corridor over here to the left, but I feel like my chances of getting the dog back in the corridor are much, much greater from the left than from the right. And that's why I think, again, I'm not smart enough, I'd have never thought of that, but looking at it, I probably would if, if my dog, after seeing everything that's going on, my dog goes and it makes it between those decoys, stop it cast it a little bit down the levee. So what if I get five points for being out of the corridor? If that right hand, the next back that I give gets that dog in the water and I can keep him there, I'm not getting beat up like I am continually being out of it up there on the hillside. You've got to have a strategy entering an out of sight zone. The strategy's got to be angling in favor, in, in, the, in, a, in a favorable direction. Which is it's like we've got a rebird going on here. Pat, you absolutely have to have a strategy, but as Mike Tyson once said, everybody has a strategy till you get punched in the face. So, <laughs> but you're gonna get punched in the face here. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know what I say? What? You're gonna say Omaha here a couple times. Yeah, yep, yep. A couple gonna audibles to, out you're there. You're gonna throw some audibles in. You gotta be ready for Omaha. Uh -huh. But here's one classic strategy is you're going to run enough blinds in training dealing with areas where you're not going to see your dog. You've got to decide what momentum, in other words, let's look at a clock. 12 o'clock is the blind. You better have 11 o'clock momentum entering that big water. That's your best chance, unless you've got a dog that's incredibly disciplined. But I'm going to guess that even really good disciplined water dogs are going to struggle with that re-entry. Oh, I guarantee you. But I also can tell you this too. When we get to these open dogs, you're going to see some dogs that get in that water and stay in that water and go a long, long way. Okay. I mean, I, you know, I took a look at the scores coming in here and one of the things that's changed a little bit is there's been some separation between the amateur division and the open division. All six of our amateur teams are outside of the lowest score in the AMs, is outside of the highest score in the open. And I do believe that you're going to see some dogs that come up here to the line, you know, dogs like, you know, Hatch, Cappy, I mean, all of them, Legend, every dog that we've got here coming up in this finals has a chance to stay with. Well, here comes Cash. I have one quick question for you while he gets ready. What's a question? Give me a question. When you come back to the, uh, to the dog, mm -hmm. do you have to send the dog from inside or once the bird hits the ground, can you pull him out of the deal and then send You've him? You've got to send from inside. As a matter of fact, the question was asked. And initially, when they started to run this, they had the hut to the right of the handler. Mm -hmm. And the question is asked, well, can I pull the dog out and send him from my left? And okay. he said, no. And the handler pointed out, well, look, I'm not a two-sided handler. My dog always works from the left. In a hunting scenario, I would never set it up where my dog was going to be on the right-hand side. And the judges thought about it. 
moved it to the left. Well, wait a minute. What happens if you're just a right-sided handler? Now the dog's on the left. So he'd have the same argument. <laughs> he would. I think <laughs> probably what we'd have seen if that argument had come up is that it probably changed the setup where you could do it either way. <laughs> I mean, well, honestly, I, well, we've seen that before. Guys getting a good look there at Jason and Cash. Cash is a six-year-old. Cash actually was in the 2020 crown and finished uh, second in the finals that time. So this is uh, Cash's second appearance here in the crown championship final round. Um, placed second and third this year in SRS events. And only been running competitively for three years. Wow. Cash has his Grand Hunting Retriever Championship as well as his Master Hunter title and Master National Retriever title. Uh -oh. oh, he popped. Did you hear how loud that handler said? Yeah. What I want, I think that dog was going for the long bird, smelled the short bird and got confused. I think you're exactly right. Because I heard that big booming scent. I thought, for a second I was thinking, is he trying to get him to get that long bird up the hill? Well, be really interesting is how the judges score that too because even though the dog popped he resumed on his own I think Jason if Jason did make any movement at all I, I didn't catch it and he might have cast him out. No, no, no no. This test is like eating an elephant you got to do it one bite at a time that's really what you got to do. <laughs> I don't know, I was hungry last night. I could eat an elephant one bite. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's one of the amazing things about, you know, having this crowd championship in Louisiana is the food, right? We went out last night and mm -hmm. had some really great food. Jason and Cash are from Grand Island, Nebraska. Jason's a big Cornhuskers fan. They got a big win last night, and he's hoping to get a win here today. That'd be a much uh, improved weekend. Started off nicely, and to tap it off with the Crown Championship would be a uh, once-in-a-lifetime experience, I'm sure. Oh, mm. got him just outside of it. Now, we've been told that is a 50-point penalty. 50-point penalty. Oh, no. Okay, back nope. in. Circle right. back in. camera had zoomed in, I thought that he was beside the right decoy and going by it on the right side, but indeed he was on the left, on the left decoy, yep. yeah. My bad. I tell you, this is nerve-wracking too if you're a handler because we've seen all of the dogs eventually pop out to the right so far and you just don't know where your dog's at right now. Yesterday, yep. similarly, there was a spot where you couldn't see your dog for you know, 12 to 18 seconds, and I asked Luke Coor, what's that moment like? Uh, you I don't know, think he sees it. You can't see your dog, and he said, terrifying, right? Because until you see him, you don't know where to send them. Yeah, and this dog popped out on the right, and I'm not sure that, under that Jason tree. sees him. I don't know if Jason sees him right now. That's yeah, a bad thing sometimes about running a yellow dog. So we don't think he ever saw him come out of the water? I don't think he's ever picked him up. He clearly came out. He went deep. Ah, that's interesting. So unless they, I asked the judges, are there any lateral movement restrictions on the handling? Initially, they said no. What did you hear, Jay Paul? Yeah, I never heard them give any restriction. It's more what I just saw, that that dog, he lost him to the rod. And he circled and when he back came around. Out, he actually popped up almost at the depth of the blind to the left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really, really interesting. And there Wait. were no whistles to get him there. Did, so. so he came out with that front tree. No, the one I he's saw about it. to swim in front of right now. And but then he circled back around and came around to the. Handler never blew a whistle. Though. Handler never blew a whistle. Do you think he couldn't see him? Or he really just trusted his dog? Uh, yeah, I think he. 
Oh. I don't think he could see him, but maybe he, he did just trust his There's dog. no I'm way he sure. could have seen the dog and not blown that whistle. I mean, you, all right, so here's where I'm going with this. Look I agree. At, look at the handling. Where is a higher spot? If there's no handling restrictions, would you consider coming way up here into this highest zone with a little bit more elevation to see the dog? You better I you certainly would be. Yeah, I, I definitely, definitely would. You see what I'm talking about here? Mm -hmm. If you got right in front of us here, right in this highest point, I could see that dog from here. And if he couldn't, I bet you this is a book. Now, the one thing is when you move your location, sometimes a dog doesn't know where to find you. That's a tricky thing. Because that you'd be moving oh, 20, 15 come yards. Come on, boy, get yep. right. No, I agree with you, Pat. I've been so like they must at, have given him some. Look at this picture here. This is the jib. Now, the jib's a little higher. I bet you one of those tall clumps of cover on the far shore blinded him from seeing the dog. Yeah, if you're watching this on the, on the live stream, what Pat's talking about is to the right side of your screen. So we're certainly to, to Jason's left. The arm there you see uh, with the number on it is his left arm. But as Pat's describing there, uh, on the right side of your screen, Pat's saying if, if, if it were him, he would go a little to that side because it is a little bit higher so you could see your dog more. Now there's a good view. Now you're looking at... The dogs are going to come out on the right unless you have a real disciplined dog. You know, Pat, I almost have to believe that they have put some restriction on it because surely someone would have thought to come over to their left and got to that higher ground. I know I certainly would be up there handling the dog if I could. But in the heat of that excitement, that's an easy thing to forget. Or overlook. Looks like that uh, office grass must be to the left a little bit. But here's the thing, if they go left, they're going to catch wind of it. And it looks like Cash did, but he just didn't trust his nose then. That dog couldn't have been more than 12, 15 feet away from that bird on the downwind side. And I thought he got a whiff of it, but he just didn't really trust his nose. There we go. He's starting to send it again. See that tail work? He worked it out, but it definitely cost him a couple points. Really, really pleasant day here in Bossier City, Shreveport, Louisiana. Had a front come through, lots of sunshine, but much, much cooler today. Actually, just a little bit chilly out here. See, Pat's got on a pullover, and I'm pretty sure David got short sleeves, wishing he had a jacket, too. Right. So I moved over to the right to get a little better look, and none of the judges are sitting down either. They're just as pumped as we are, and they're bouncing around. A lot of talk in between them. I mean, there's, this is an exciting deal. Jay Paul, you lied to me. You told me it's going to be 78 degrees. That's why I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. It's 69 <laughs> degrees. I said it was going to be. It's going to be 78 degrees again someday. <laughs> just not For today. Sure. Yeah, it just may not be today. There you got that one nicely. Now he's got one bird left to go. I don't know if you saw his line to that bird, but he went just behind the holding line, so favoring the gun side. Once again. I always say, identify where the bird came from first. Favor the gun, let them figure out how to find it. On a bird, certainly on a short bird. Dave's really taking his time here with Cash. 
trying to talk him into even will him into that bird. Cash is ready to go. I think Cash has a good idea where he's headed. Yeah, good initial line there. Really good initial line there. Now let's see where he comes out in relation to these decoys. Okay. Yeah, you're right. He did. Squared it though just a little bit, it looked like. Sometimes they'll square out as when they get on land, but this dog's actually holding a nice one. Yeah, well, he actually squared and turned right and then he break it further towards the bird. Now, this bird I can't see on the ground, but I guess the when you land on had, it, you don't yeah. need to see it. Exactly. Perfect, Mark, there. We're going to find out whether there's lateral movement restrictions with this next handler. Because if anybody's going to run left, it's going to be Carter. <laughs> I watched him yesterday. He used every ounce of the playing field to get through uh, yesterday morning's water blind. And the reason why we have Carter running now, he is sprinkled into the amateurs, but the reason that we have him running now is because he came into this, I believe, in fifth and sixth place. Is that correct? That's correct. So Carter has three of the six dogs in the open division, uh, Cappy, Shooter, and Zeus. But Shooter is fifth, and Zeus is sixth entering the final series. And obviously, we don't want Carter to have to run back to back. So we're going to now have Carter run uh, here in a moment with Zeus. And then uh, that allows him to break it up a little bit. Also. We always run our dogs here from the highest to lowest score, and they certainly do not want Carter to come in here and run ahead of Cash with one of his dogs and Justin because they had a lower score and they are competing against one another in the open division. So they're going to make a little bit of movement. They're going to do it between the amateurs as they did so it doesn't have any influence and the guy with the lower score in the open still has the advantage of running after him. The amateur that he's running in front of, he's still going to run after all the other amateurs. Does that make sense to you, David? Yeah. Kind of had a puzzled look on your face there for a second. I do often when you're speaking. No, I'm just kidding, Ren. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no, gotcha. Yeah, no, Zeus and, and Carter Turner will be next to the line as we see them here. That's a really interesting spelling of Zeus, too. I've noticed that earlier this week. Never seen it spelled that way. Tell you what, I'm not sure I'd want to start out with half of my dogs kicking out of the blind, but he's definitely going to be able to get a better look at the birds that way. <laughs> Saw Carter's mother here this morning, knowing that her son has uh, three dogs here in the final. She drove all night since she left South Georgia uh, last night and arrived here at 6 a.m. to see her boy. So wow, good, good for, for her. you, Mom. What a great mom. Loves her boy, I guarantee you. All right, he's got her decoy adjustment made here. Here they come. I'll tell you, Pat, the only thing that could have made this more realistic is if they'd have made him get down, get down. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been out in the decoys and I've had them say to me, hey, get down, get down. And you drop face down to the water to make sure that you know, you're not spooking those birds. All right, Carter's going to load up here. Some more birds are about to work in. He's going to give them a little bit of call. Here they come. Left bird, it's a good throw. I think Zeus got a good look at it. Right bird comes out, the poison bird gets that splash. Now he's reeling it in. Middle bird came out. And the goat bird. Ah. 
Where did you say, huh? Because he pulled him out of the blind to send him on the go bird. Yes, and uh, did he did he line by that bird? He sure did, and this may be why he pulled him out. What? In a, well, so folks, initially uh, the judges had said that you had to send the dog initially from the blind, but there were several discussions. We actually, if you guys uh, were watching the test dogs, we weren't commentating on it, but if you were watching. You know that there were several changes made to this test, including initially the test was set up to have bird boy number one, who throws the first bird, actually throw two birds simultaneously. And a lot of discussion was made after that. So did you change. see he elected to handle to the long bird? I don't blame him at all. No, I can see. Not, not at that point. Here's the deal. If he pulled him out to go get that long bird, I believe that he was just staying committed to that. But the other thing, and there's a penalty for pulling your dog out. His reasoning may have been, hey, I've got a much better chance of getting that long bird. I'm just going to take this penalty to go and get it. Do you really think he sent for that long bird? Oh, I know he did. I'm sure he did. All right. I Maybe there's our first bet for a beer tonight. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to go talk to Carter and find out here in just a little bit. Well, remember you do the blind after you pick up a mark of any mark. Mm -hmm. Well, any, any mark. mark other than the poison bird mark. Okay, the poison bird. Which is the bird in the the sec uh, the right hand corner of that piece of water. Good initial line. And whether you are aware of that or not, uh, most of these dogs are sent on their name for marked retrieves and the word back on blind retrieves. So that's certainly one of your first clues try to communicate you're doing a blind and not a marked retrieve. Most handlers are getting a reasonably good initial line here. They're getting to the end of the piece of water. That's 0 so important right there to not pick up that poison bird. <clears throat> Exactly, or he tried to do exactly what you said. Well, he entered with as much left momentum as he could have from that position. Let's see where he shows up. But did you see his prior cast? It oh, looked absolutely. Like he was trying to give him more of an over than a back. Probably there. to set up the next cast. Yep. Okay, folks, I just got a little clarification from our marshal, Matt Emerson, uh, who told me that two things. Pat asked the question about lateral movement. Yeah, he confirmed there's no restrictions on lateral movement 
and for the also, handler on the blind. So you can move as far left or right as well, you Well, we're seeing it right now with Carter. Carter has decided to come way farther left than the rest. Well, I'll tell you what he's doing right now. We called it. He's just picked up the blind, but he's studying where he may want to handle his next dog. I promise mm -hmm. you that's why he's standing there. And, and he's probably those. doing what I would do. You learn maybe just as much by studying the return of the dog as you do the way out for future reference. So he's probably trying to think, where do I want to be at the moment of truth that I can see my dog better? The other thing we learned talking to Matt that there was initial discussion about having to send the dog inside the hut, however, when they gave the final handling instructions, they did tell the handlers that after the last bird was down, you could pull your dog okay. out to send it. So there was no penalty involved in that. So you may be right. Maybe he wasn't sending for the long bird, but I, I'm pretty sure he was. I'm not going to concede buying that beer yet. <laughs> You're going to have to earn it. Big but talk so, from two guys that say they're going to buy beers, and last night when I wanted another one, y'all went to the elevators and I went to the bar. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. David, we're both a lot older than you. We need a, <laughs> all the rest we can get. Hey, as we see here in the Super Retriever Series, younger dogs can compete with the older ones. I'm just saying. <laughs> Pat, you were talking yesterday about you just love watching Carter's demeanor at the line. You said that he's just, you can tell that him and his dogs have a mutual respect for each other. And passion. I mean, that's the word, that's the first word I see, is passion. And his passion for just competitive and in nature and intensity. And if I can feel it, I know his dogs feel it. And it really, I mean, I, I truly enjoy this, watching him. Very humble guy, also a little self-deprecating humor this morning. I said, man, you got three dogs here. He goes, that means whew, I'll probably do all right with two of them, but I'm probably going to mess one of these dogs up. <laughs> he said, all three of the dogs are great, but it, I'm probably going to be the problem with one of them. Well, you know what? I, I, I'm just dying to hear what his thoughts are on that, 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 that first retrieve. I, the dog looked like he swam within a couple feet of that bird and didn't even look at it. It's up now I can... You gotta really sell them on this now. See the bird right there? In other mm -hmm. words, you gotta relax. I mean, this is like almost the ultimate relax. The ultimate easy cue right here. Right there. Easy. And you're really kind of, see, not sitting them down. He's really trying to keep them like, dogs going, are you sure you want me to go there? <laughs> I'm this. not believing this. Look, oh, he's going over to it, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> For a minute, he looked like he was going to swim by it again. But, you know, I wonder if he thought it was just another snow goose sneak away at first. Well, maybe we'll ask the dog when he comes back. <laughs> Let me know Because he's touched. probably the only one that really knows what went on. <laughs> That's rule number one in television. Don't ever interview a child and always expect an animal to not do what you want it to do when it's on camera. Okay? <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Two most unpredictable things in the world is a five-year-old child or a five-year-old dog, right? <laughs> yeah. A dog. Me as well. All right. Two birds to go, sending for the far right-hand bird. Probably on a pretty good spot here. Does he wind it right? It winds a little bit on her back, though. He didn't win that bird, did he? Mm -mm. You know, we saw that with the prior dog. Actually, I think the prior dog winded it at first, but if they go by on that left side, it's not guaranteed. Coming back, though, I, I think. Yeah, he is. Oh, I see where he got that bird. I can see where he maybe didn't win it, because that maybe when he got downwind, he was he was behind. The bush was in the way. <clears throat> 
Pat, I think you'd stop, stepped away to take a bite of your Chick-fil-A a minute ago, but when the prior dog ran that, went right by, not 12 feet from it, threw its nose up for just a second and started to hunt. Worked its way back to it. But. Right. I bet you a lot of these handlers would love to know what some of these early scores are. <laughs> You know, that really came through my mind when, after watching, uh, I think it was Jason Flaster and Cash run him, and the dog went all the way back there without a handle. Boy, you'd love to be able to see the scores to know, is that a good gamble or not? Unfortunately, they don't have that luxury here in the finals. You got to, you, this is a combination of, you got to run by the two little, camera holding blinds, but not just keep going. Okay. I think he's in a pretty good spot here. To me, they look so far. Oh. Yeah. From this angle, you know, it's just hard to tell. He looks so far right of it, but you can see him on the camera angle, and he really wasn't. He's hunting the bird. Yeah. He just, he's just about to grab it right now, I think. David, you know, Pat has stepped away from us. Not really sure why. I don't know if he stepped away to look and see what it looks like from that angle looking down the line, or if he's just trying to ambush Carter to find out which bird he <laughs> sent for. I might have to hear it from Carter's mouth though before I buy him that beer. I know, right? You wondered why I walked over there? Yeah, Pat walked about 75 feet from us. Because I wanted direction. to get right behind the line and see what vision the handler has on that blind and right. why those Those clumps of heavy cover can line up where you may not see the dog till he's quite a ways out of the water, almost into those shadows of those bigger pine trees. Jay Paul doesn't believe me, he's gonna go check it out. <laughs> but he's, he's gonna, also about I think to, he's also gonna go check. <laughs> yeah. With Carter. Getting some insider information here. Oh he's So of course, now we right, turn okay, back to the amateur he, competitors. He Smokey and John Lamar will come to the line. Uh, now, again, the reason we ran Carter Turner was because Carter has uh, several, uh, three dogs in the finals, including two that were back-to-back. -back. Uh, so we ran Zeus and Carter there. Now we're going back to our amateur competitors, uh, Smokey and John Lamar. And guys, Smokey and John entered yesterday in first, uh, and then Tex and Stuart Williams passed them, but still only 18 points between these two heading here into the final series. Yes, he's still in good shape. I mean, this is a tight, tight race here in this amateur division. Not a lot of separation between all these dogs. He's got the chance to make up some ground for sure here coming into this finals. Smokey actually has a field trial background, but has adapted well into the HRC and SRS field this year. Like Pat, come from the field trial world, but we attracted Pat over here to SRS. I'm so, trying to adapt too. <laughs> doing a great job of it, sir, providing so many great insights. I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and said, you know, Pat, that guy knows his stuff, man. <laughs> I know more and more about less and less. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to time another the test. This yeah. one has already started. The next one, I'm going to time it and just see roughly how long we're running. Right. Per dog and handler. Yeah. 
Pat and I are sitting here taking a look at some of the NCAA football scores. Some of those games are as close as this is. Okay. Okay. Appreciate all you that are watching this and foregoing football games this afternoon. This is a lot more interesting. All right. Go birds down, or last birds down. I don't really consider that much of a go bird with the one there dead right. in line on the water in front of it. Well, you're, you are primary selecting, but it's a fr pretty friendly primary selection yeah. scenario. And Carter thought maybe his dog thought it was a poison bird. That's what he said to me, too. And he also said he never s didn't think he saw that, that bird that was deep up at the last, actually, the literal go bird, which is the bird, the longest bird up the hill. Mm -hmm. And he said that that's why he elected to handle to that bird versus the short one, because he thought he had, which I think was really smart. Yeah. If he never saw it, chance of getting clean mm -hmm. slim anyway. Two-time team of the year winner, also Smokey. The last two years, John and Smokey have had that honor. So this dog shows a lot of consistency. And he's back here in the finals this year. Testament to that. You know, both our amateur and our professional team of the years made it here to the finals. Uh, we have Smokey and John Lamar here in the amateurs, and then Shooter and, and Carter Turner in the uh, open division. So these dogs are uh, definitely uh, not only consistent, but also uh, getting it done here in Shreveport. Got a little wind shift here. I'm feeling yes, it off have. my right cheek, which is going to be real tricky because he's going to win this poison bird uh, if the wind is down there the same as I just felt it. Looking at the fountain, too. Would you rather be here casting away from it? I think so. Yeah, 100%. When are you going to blow? You get Just took a hard look at it. Good safety. Safety. He throws that, a little bit of a delayed back. Just see how he threw his hand up, got the turn, and then added the voice a little bit on the back end of the cast. Really liked what he was doing there, too, with those extra whistles. He's willing to give up two points to save 50 in a hurry. Or a hundred in this case, possibly picking up that poison bird. So, very, very smart handling, in my opinion, on John's part. You really have to assume. That's going to happen again here. The fact that you're not seeing him right away tells you he's swimming. See, there he there is. There he goes, up to the right. I see. Hey. So hard to get that dog left there. It's twice we've heard a handler give a loud here and the dog interpret it as a back. <clears throat> I 
That's a nice cast there, though, Pat. Indeed. See John staring out there really intently. Even though Smokey's got the blind, I'm sure he's willing to watch him really, really closely. He doesn't want him to pop up over that levee, get a nose full of the, that poison bird and snatch it up. But as you can see, John probably can't see this from where he's at. Smokey's got back in the water being a good boy on the return. He's got quite a swim there. Looks like there's a little crease there where from the line you can see the dog. So obviously come back in view to John too. Looking a little relieved right there. Always makes me nervous when I can't see my dog. Mm -hmm. Even if he's got the bird and he's coming back. Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna, there's so many things that can happen on a return. The dog can lose sight of where the handler is, and I've actually seen dogs go out of competitions, pick up a bird and just go the opposite direction, just getting disoriented. And you're not gonna have it here, but the other thing that can happen is they can retrieve a bird and have a wing over the eyes and not be able to tell where they're going. So really focusing on everything that goes on all the way to the delivery is really good handling practice. That's a good looking boat there. Thank you. <laughs> We're awful proud of it, I'll tell you that. You know, when we set out to design that boat, uh, Brian, Brian Wright, my partner, and I, we said we didn't want to be copycats. You know, we didn't want to just do I'll... what everybody else was doing. We truly wanted to design a boat that was going to push all the buttons and correct some of the things that. Over the years, we found that we just didn't like it aluminum boats, but I appreciate the compliment. Yeah, I, I walked around it and studied it. Welding is really top-notch and looks really cool. Yeah, there are a couple of interesting features I'd love to tell you about in welding okay. between dogs. Okay, so what's... He looks like he's setting up for the left bird next. A little different yeah. pickup order. First one we've seen experiment hmm. with it a little bit. It doesn't seem like anybody's had any trouble doing it the other way, but... No, well, when I say that, one dog handled early. Test, actually, the test dog's handled on it. So do you think the strategy to pick this up is for the sake of this bird, or do you think he feels that that helps him on the, on the two birds out in the field? I think it's because he feels like it helps him for the two birds out in the field. Tell you, I, he, I think he could be in a little bit of trouble here. There's a real pronounced hole in the cover where the dogs are going in on the water blind. And he forced him to handle here. I think especially because you have to be comfortable staying on land for a long time. There, Smokey's got it. Clean it up. You know, it could be that he sent him on it because he thought it would help him avoid the po poison bird as well. Though maybe not get back in the water, headed toward it, or right. either of these other two. But I got to think that he, he had to feel like it would influence him positively in some way on these other landmarks. 
I'm not sure it worked out that way, but I'm... And, you know, he might have handled on that bird no matter when he sent for it. Well, you know, you pick up this right-hand bird next to last. I know for me, I would feel like it would definitely influence my dogs to go more to the left. On and the we've middle seen bird. several... I was thinking, if I get this one next to last, I'm gonna have a better chance of getting a long bird without going to the right of it. He's outside that bird. Ooh, he's gonna handle here too, isn't he? Oh, he's gonna have to have, I think that... I don't know if he was going to carry that line quite a way. He didn't show any indication that he was about to check up or bring down. And you what's know, interesting here is they are just not lending that bird as they go by. Yeah. You just got to realize, once you deny these marks by doing that blind, their state of mind is, do I get to pick them up or don't I? And you really have to sell them on it's okay to, you know, hunt again. because you've told them they can have them, now you're trying to tell them they can Trying to talk them back into it. a little bit there. Let's see if he turns back to the left. Looks like he's still going right up. And way right at that. Unfortunately, John's going to have to have yet another handle here, it appears. Gee, Paul, when I first came up here, I said this was going to come down to the blind. I was wrong. It's going to come down to these marks. As it should. Yep. Guys, as he's bringing this, uh, as he's bringing this bird back, I got a question for you. You guys had fun this week? <laughs> a blast. Well, go ahead and mark your calendars. I want to tell you and everyone else uh, the dates for next year's crown, if you're not aware. Uh, so the Super Doc competition for the Crown Championship will be October 24th through the 27th. And then the Retriever Crown will be October 28th through November 3rd, right here in Shreveport, Bossier City again. So thanks again to the Shreveport, Bossier City Sports Commission uh, for having us back next year. And uh, we'll look forward to being back here in Louisiana next year, a little bit later in October. But again, the uh, Super Doc Crown Championship will be the 24th through the 27th of October. And the Retrievers Crown Championship will be October 28th through November 3rd. So whoever wins here today, they will be crown champions all the way until November 3rd next year when we'll name the 2024 champs. Bring and your Halloween costume. Well, that's our traditional weekend to have, or traditional week. Mm -hmm. Normally, we, have, we come into this on the first weekend, ended up in the first weekend in November. So it'll be nice to go back to our traditional time slot there. I actually think I had my mic off and I mentioned to you, Jay Paul, and then, pardon me if I'm repeating myself. Initially, I thought this was going to come out to be the blind being the most significant aspect in determining the winner. I think I'm wrong. It's going to be these marks. Yeah. And like yeah. I said to you, as Definitely. it should, as it should, because it really, marking is primary. So, because a lot of the blinds have actually been quite similar. I believe you'll see that carry over into the open. I, I do think that we'll see more watery blinds when we get to our open dogs. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that the marks are still going to be the significant factor in this. And I'll tell you, you know, we were talking about the over and under and how we've done that. When we were talking about earlier today, at one point, when that first gun was going to throw out two birds at the same time, 
you know, I felt like the, the over and under would be about a point five. <laughs> that maybe one or two dogs at would best do would, would do this. I'm glad they pulled that out of there because we have seen dogs that have been able to come out and pick up all these marks clean. Uh, these judges have been very, very smart with their setups. Stepping to the line now, or actually now at the line, is Tex and uh, Stuart Williams. Of course, they were in second, and then after a great fourth series yesterday, moved into first. Um, you know, Tex uh, maybe a little bit newer, but uh, Stuart certainly is not as a handler. He was the Yukonuba Team of the Year in 2019. He finished third at the Crown in 2019 with Stormy, and sixth at the Crown in 2019 with Casper. Then third in 2021 with Stormy at the Crown, and sixth the last year, uh, 2022 with Stormy. So Stormy unfortunately passed away in May of 2023, but now Stewart's here with Tex and uh, trying to take the Crown Championship back home to Natchez, Mississippi. Stewart comes in here with an 18 point cushion over John and Smokey, who came in here in second place. So he's got a little bit of ground that he can afford to give up. Sure, he was intensely watching Smokey run then, also. And you know, he, uh, Stuart, really learned a lot of what he learned about this sport from his two mentors, Rick Nock and Leo Joseph III. I saw Leo this morning, so I know uh, that at least he's here on site cheering on Stuart. Tell you, Leo was good. very, very invested in all of his handlers as a professional. Something's going on. They have a problem with the with one of the guns. Yeah, they swapped them, so I'm thinking so. Stuart's about to start it off with a little bit of calling. What do we got here, guys? He can. I think he's going for the one mark you can't pick up. Yeah, I think hmm. he is too. Which is unfortunate because it's going to require him to handle that left-hand bird. Actually, Pat, you can pick it up, but you're going to pay a 100 point penalty. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Kevin's got it cleaned up. Marshall's here. Wow. Love the camera angle from Jim cool. Joe. It's great Fantastic. for us too. another thing that picking up that left hand bird first may hurt you and you know a lot of these dogs we run a lot of times fairly tight on blind retrieves to old mm -hmm. balls yeah I think Texas initial line may have been was more back there that. okay he's angling for the goal posts here but he's a little bit on the left edge of it isn't he He's given a lot Ooh. of rights. 
boys. He's just make, trying to get to the correct side of that one decoy. I think he's got him there. Yep. <clears throat> Good verbal there. Goes with a big verbal to try to punch him out into the water. <laughs> Look what he's doing here. <laughs> oh! Yeah, well. Yeah, he's moved way up onto the higher ground. I'm not sure that's going to help him, but it's... You know, he was working hard to avoid that 50-point penalty, but he racked up some significant yeah, he points did. with all those cast refusals. Oh. And still... He's just doing some behavior up behind, right at the water's edge that he just can't, can't see. You got to use those verbals to drive them, and then so far it hasn't worked. We'll see if it does now. I think was trying to give him that coming muscle to pull him in the water. Well, if you were in, would you have gone to the word here versus a come in there? If, if, you, if that was your strategy? I wouldn't have, yes, probably so, yes. You were about to say you wouldn't have what? I don't think I'd have given him any cap for coming at all at that point. I'd have given him more You'd of an gone over. from there to the blind. Yeah. yeah. Okay. As I said earlier, I would try to get my dog wet, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to fight that battle too long. Okay. I'm going to let him roll. So he's got this little short bird in front of us, right? He's got the three right-hand birds left to pick up. Am I, am I correct? You are correct. He's picked up that left water mark. Now he has the three birds to pick up on the right hand side, the two on the hill and one left in the water. And I'll tell you, the one in the water, normally that would scare me as a mark because you're going to have to have him go right back through it very quickly. Whereas if he picked it up first, you wouldn't be fighting wouldn't. that battle. On the flip side, we just saw him not, not have any hesitancy go right back past yeah. where he came. So, you know, So these decoys provide a, a real reference if you elect to handle from a different location. You know, sometimes when you handle from someplace other than where the line is, you lose the perspective of where you need to be. So if you decided to handle where this gentleman's standing, way to the left, the decoys do help you reference you know, the goalposts because they're still there. And uh, a lot of times when I'm coaching my handlers, if they decide to move it, you've got to find landmarks that you can identify so you can run the line, the proper line. The judges are looking at the line from the map. Yeah, and I want to point out something here too while this dog is calling me back so there's no real confusion on it. You know, he picked up that left-hand bird first. Mm -hmm. It's fine to do that. The only bird you can't pick up first is that poison bird. When Pat and I were talking earlier today, we were talking about handling early on that. Now, if he picked up that left-hand bird on the blind, it would have cost him 100 points for picking it up while running the blind. But, so there's clear, and we talked about that earlier, you pick it up on the way the blind, the left bird, if it's still there, it's going to cost you 100 points. If you just go and pick it up as the first bird out, they said you could pick up any of the marks but the poison bird before you ran the blind. So. He did not collect a 100-point penalty then for picking up the left bird. You only would get that if you picked up that left bird en route to the blind. So let's say he picked up that short water mark like everybody else has, and then trying to run the blind, he gets the left bird, 100 points. But just kick off, you pick up any bird you want to begin with but that. So he picked it up first on the left, no 100 points. But he is going to have a handle to it, obviously. What's the penalty for getting the poison bird? 
100 points. Same. 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 Okay. Hey, here's the deal. And they talked about this. You send the dog for the blind, and both those birds are still out there, and you pick up the left bird, you got your 100 point penalty. Uh, but then, you've still got the poison bird, you could get that double whammy. It could happen again. 200 points. Two, yep. Got it. Pat, where do you go now if you're handling it? I would think you'd, okay, here's what I'd do. I mean, I'd get that visible bird. I'd go for the right one, let that area cool off. In other words, if you're worried about him not wanting to go on the same line, yep. getting this right bird next would, would maybe go ahead and relax him a little bit. <clears throat> Me too. And then go. Now this bird, every now and then I can see that longer middle bird, I, I can see it sitting on the hill. This one I can see, I can see. I can, yeah. I can see it, yep. Now, you gotta get close enough to see it. But he decided to go for that long middle bird immediately, which he had to handle on it. Hmm. So did we say that this dog was the high point amateur dog, or highest placing, lowest point amateur dog lowest coming point, in? highest place, yeah, he was in first place coming. Correct, he was coming into this and he had two handle on two. Handle on two. Yeah, We've had several not handle on any of them, so. Did you see the way it was testing the wind just then, David? Yep. Yeah. You can actually see a pile of the grass right there on the yeah. boat that Stuart picked so that he can just kind of throw it up and test the, the So did he grab a bunch and set it up there so uh -huh. he knew he was going to test it? Uh -huh. Yeah, he, he took okay. all that grass and just sat it there. You can see it right there. Yeah, no, I, I saw him reach over and grab something on the boat and hold it up in the air. Throwing trash in my boat. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, did he intentionally go for that left bird, or was he trying to actually send for the right? I don't know how you could have ended up there without sending for it, so. But I didn't see the lineup. If you're not, care if you're not care careful, you could handle on three here. Now, God, you'd think he'd smell it, right? Uh -oh. He's going to handle on three. I can't think of an instance why I would, after going right down there and picking up that little short bird, why I would ever go back to it next with yeah. that bird on the right. You gotta think that Tex kind of maybe ended up in no man's land or something and yeah. he decided to the, go and clean it up. We call it the dreaded betwixt and between. Yeah. When you're betwixt and between two marks, both physically and mentally. Hmm. I know uh, that's not what he was looking for. Nope. We are at our halfway point here. Dogs, we've ran six. Remember, we've still got an amateur to come back at the oh. very end. We've got Brian to come back with this dog at the Do we have the a fisherman end. coming so we've in? We've still got five pros and one am left to go. So we've had a, a group of fishermen come in on the left. I'm not sure what they're yeah, going to do. Probably going to have to take a, a, a quick break here. Thanks, Andy and Opie are over there on a nice little Saturday morning fishing venture. But unfortunately, yeah. they. Okay. Well, get, I'm going to ask you a question now that we have a little break. <laughs> I've never let the four wheeler head out. 
watching the mechanic sitting in the chair, and I watched this handler in his effort to pull the dog to the right. He leaned as far back in the chair as he could. Do you do wagon wheels out of a chair? No. I, I'd be doing wagon wheels out of a chair to, teach, to get the dog to respond to pushing and pulling from that position. I mean, I do a, a jillion of them standing because that's the procedure that, that you know my, the filter all world, the handlers are going to do. But would there be anything wrong with rotating and doing a 360 healing drill so from the I, chair? So I've thought about that quite a bit. And the reason why we've never done wagon wheel drills out of chairs is because we run so many HRC hunt tests. And you know, it's a constant battle. If you run a lot of hunt tests in HRC where you're swinging the dog with that gun, you're fighting a constant battle between getting the dog to move, but also not having the dog head swing when you don't have a gun in play. So I've always been a little bit careful about that. I, I, Okay. I'm not saying there'd be anything wrong with the pad. It probably might be excellent. It's just not something that I've done. And that's the reason why. While we got a quick break here, just want to remind everyone of our uh, Instagram giveaway contest. So Super Retriever Series Instagram account recently hit 10,000 followers. And to celebrate, we're doing a 10K giveaway on Instagram. If you want to enter, uh, simply tag a friend on that post on the Instagram account. Also, like and subscribe on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. One lucky winner will win a Lucky Duck kennel, two bags of Yukonuva Premium Performance Food with a complimentary nutritional consultation with one of Yukonuva's pros, uh, pro representatives, a Yeti dog bowl, wet mutt bumpers, and some SRS swag. So. Great stuff there. I want to give a shout out to Ron Anderson and Casey Parker. Just sent me a text. I'm making the most out of college football and the SRS at the same time, sitting, sitting on Ron's patio. They've got two TV screens up there. They're watching the football game. I've got to assume the Missouri LSU game on one screen, and they're watching the LSU, I mean the SRS on the other. You gotta love that. And Tell you, a big shock that neither one of those guys are here. I mean, there have been some big names here that we just don't see in the amateur. Ron, uh, man, very unfortunate. I'm sure he'll be back, you know, be back. Imagine uh, with a vengeance. And Stephen Durant's very notable that first time I can ever remember him not making the finals here in the Crown Championship. Hope you guys are having fun though, and I hope you're enjoying our broadcast as well. We miss you guys, Ron and Casey. And guys, a minute ago, I was saying that we hit 10K on the Instagram account, and so we're doing a We Hit 10K giveaway. We're not giving away $10,000, so just wanted to clarify on that. Uh, <laughs> 10, oh, the 10,000 was in reference to number of followers, not what was being given away. But nonetheless, a great prize package. <clears throat> when we get started here again in a moment, our dog to the line will be Shooter and Handler Carter Turner. They came in today in fifth place with 208 points. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, Shooter and Carter are the Yukonuba team of the year here in the Open Division. Speaking of Yukonuba, I want to thank them once again for being the presenting sponsor of the Super Retriever Series Crown Championship. All right, and if you're just joining us now, go, go back through the scenario because this test, it is a humdinger as we have our next better Carter come to the line. This is a hunt savvy test, they call it. Uh, I call it an old fashioned shoot 'em up. We had a lot of these early days of the SRS. Of course, Danny Juvenile, one of the judges, has been around a long time. But you come to the line, you put your dog in the dog hide, as you see him do there. Dog comes out, you've got to put him back in again. Now, once the test starts, if the dog comes out, You've got to put them back. It's a 25-point penalty. Test begins with a bunch of calling. They're going to call between 7 and 10 seconds. Then we'll keep it around that mark. And 
as frequently happens in hunting, you know, the birds yeah. don't finish, somebody decides something is just isn't right yeah. with the decoys. So our handler, he gets up, as you see Carter doing there, and he's gonna make a little adjustment to the decoy. He's gonna add another snow goose. They had it sitting there on the front of the boat. Maybe it was drawing too much attention to him, giving away their spot, so. His uh, fellow hunters have asked him to make an adjustment to the decoys and put that snow goose decoy out. Of course, all the time when you're hunting, everybody who's duck hunting for very long knows you go out to make an adjustment in the decoys. Birds see that movement and they're attracted to it, and that's exactly what happens. Bird comes in here, and our hunters in the boat, they uh, kill that, shoot that bird, put it on the water, and then they admonish Carter, come on back, get on over here. We got more birds working, so he's gonna sit down get his gun loaded up then we're going to have four more birds come in the first one is going to come in to the left here he's going to shoot that bird second bird's going to kind of be in the middle it's going to be a splash in the water that's the first bird to the left is that you're about to see he's called it in here it comes boom he shoots it it makes a splash come to the middle here another bird comes out our handler shoots it it splashes Bird comes in from the right. Got a working dog handler. He's instructed to not shoot that, but our Bubba Gunners in the boat, they're both gonna take that bird down. And then finally, our last bird comes out. It's our longest bird. It's dry across the pond in the middle. Pretty much dead in line with bird number one, and our working dog handler's gonna shoot it. After he shoots that bird, he's free to bring his dog out of the dog hide. Line him up, and he's gonna kick him off. So far, I think pretty much every handler, we've said one dog go left, but I'm not sure that was by intent. Most of our handlers, they're trying to, as Carter's doing here, talk this dog into checking down and going for that middle bird. This is Carter's second dog to run, and his first dog went right oh. by it also. Oh. I don't think Carter was intentionally sending for the long bird. He told me that wasn't his intention with his first dog, but here it's happened to him twice. First time he had to handle, let's see what happens here. Now that middle bird that's to the left of the dog in the water, that is a poison bird. After all the birds are down, the judge has told you you can pick up any bird you want except for that bird. If you pick up that bird, it is a 100 point. Oh, he came penalty. back and got it. Whew. Looks like he's worked it out, come back and picked it up. I'm sure Carter hated to see that big hunt, but he would rather have that, I'm sure, than certain than have a handle. All right, so after your dog has picked up his first mark, you're instructed that you've got to run the blind. Now this blind, he's got to split the second bird out and the third bird, which is the poison bird. Actually, at this point, they're both poison birds. If the dog were to pick up either one of these en route to this blind, he's gonna incur a 100 point penalty. So far, that left hand bird hadn't been much of a factor, but boy, the right hand bird surely has. Looking out there, uh, he's lining him up. So he's kicked the dog off now. And Shooter's got a ton of uh, titles. He's qualified all age, master hunter, hunter retrieving champion, grand hunting retriever champion, super retriever champion. Yeah, this dog has done it all. You know, this wind shift, wind is definitely going right to left now. Well, looking at the fountain there, the wind's blowing. Yeah, that which... fountain gives you a really good indication. All right, you can see those two snow de goose decoys that just popped up, the left one there in your picture. That's your goalpost. Not only do you need to avoid the poison bird, but you've got to put your dog through that slot between the decoys. If he goes to the outside of that lane on either side, you pick up a 50 point penalty for missing the keyhole or missing the slot. Shooter's looking hard at that bird, it's very visible. Black and white flasher. Looks like he got a really good cast then. All right. 
little bit to the left, as you can see there. Now he's got him lined up. I think we're going to see a big left back here. Yep. He really walked that one out down the back. See, Carter's doing some savvy handling. They put no limit on your lateral movement. So Carter, he's about to head out into the parking lot, but I think this is super smart. So far, we have not had a single dog carry that cast and stay in the water. All six dogs that we have seen run thus far have popped out very, very early on the bank to your right. Jay Paul, this is something that Pat was talking about earlier when Carter was running his other dog. He said, you know, once he knows that there's no limitations how far he can move laterally, that Carter may, on his second dog, which he's doing here with Shooter, come way farther left. Yeah, and boy, I think that was a great move there and paid off. Yep. That was a great blind. Comparatively, yeah. I mean, that was a yeah, great no, blind. I, I'm with you. Carter made some adjustments, and I could tell when he was, other dog was returning, he was walking over trying to think, of, where do I get a better view from? Sometimes you're worried when you're in a different position. When the dog turns around, you were handling it from in front of the tents before. Now you're handling it off to the side. Is the dog going to be able to locate you? So maybe you're going to exaggerate that movement a little bit, but the dog seemed to pick him up okay. Yeah, he did. Well, I mean, you called it right from the beginning, Pat. You said if somebody's going to do it, it's going to be that young man. And... <laughs> well, I watched him dance around in the, <laughs> on the other water bite. And... I'm willing to bet right now another beer that he won't be the last. You want to take that one? Uh, you sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care who buys it. I just want to have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carter's got him back. Now we're going to see where he's going to go to next. Jay Paul, I saw you walk Can't over really to the tell. judges there to get some clarification well, on something. Like what did you go find out for it? Left hand bird. Jay Paul, uh, I just said I saw you walk over there and talk to the judges for some clarification. What did you go find out for us there? So I actually wasn't looking for any information. Um, I was trying to find out where Matt was gonna take us for dinner tonight. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Uh, I'll tell you in just a second, let's we'll let him line this dog up here and get ready to kick him off. Pat, it looks to me like he's going for the left bird. He definitely, you? He definitely is, he wouldn't be standing up. He's definitely, he's definitely going for his left bird. You can tell where, see where he's standing. Oh, and he's got the, okay. Well, I think, well, he's, he's now he's gonna go for it, he's gonna get it. Uh, no, I was actually walking up to make sure that there wasn't any reflection 
off of the uh, the ranger here that our guys use out there in the field when they're going for the rebird. It's sitting here in the sun, and Pat pointed out that if it was given some reflection, it could cause a major distraction from the dog. So I wanted to take a look at that. And Yeah, Matt was telling me that he had parked it at an angle for that reason, and he does have it sitting where there shouldn't be any glare that comes off of it. With the angle of the sun, it should be reflecting away, not towards the dogs or the course. Yeah, we certainly don't want anything that would be an unnecessary distraction. Good potential pickup, though, by Pat Burns on that. Super experienced dog man that you are. <laughs> you bet. Uh, look well, at that. That was a really nice. Yeah, right yeah he, hunt, he, he hunted halfway up, came back to the edge for a minute, but quickly recovered. And if you there's know, anything I noticed, Carter's dogs are real heady. They real, they make good decisions most of the time. You know, you asked earlier about picking up that left-hand bird, and so far we only saw John Lamar do it, and it didn't work out for him. But after having Shooter go a little bit long and come back on that go bird, do you think that he probably did pick up that one first so we could pick up the right second to try to influence yeah, him to yeah. get out. I gotta think so. To the long bird? I definitely gotta think so. Me too. Just feels like this sets you up better for that middle bird. Mm -hmm. Shooter! Big send on that bird. Doesn't surprise me at all. He really wants to drive him up there. Probably a pretty big send because he hunted a he checked, he hunted a little short on this bird over here. Where's he going? He's coming out right. That's, man, I'd like to be further left than that. And the dangerous thing about a big send like that shooter is this dog has got some range, but he's bending. He's bending, he's bending. that way. Come on, boy, check out. Turn the ball. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> Bam! What a mark. Best yeah. job so far? Best job so far. All the way around. He just, he, yeah. if I were a pro sitting back there, having to run after him, and you know, there are only five here because he's got, no. There's only uh, four here. Yeah, he's there's only four dogs. here because he's, yeah, I got three other dogs. There's four oh. left. Yeah, well, but one of those is his. So there are only three other pros three here. Three other pros. If I was one of those guys back there watching this right now, uh -huh. I'd be feeling some heat. I'd be starting to sweat. That run right there, he absolutely put some pressure on the rest of the overkill. You know, we're talking about 80-something points in separation. Yeah, he definitely put the heat on the competition there, for sure. Really strong run there by Shooter and Carter Turner. Now we get a good look at uh, coming to the line here in a second. Will be Justin Herger and Cash. <laughs> Your passion. Way to go, Bulldog. Of course, leaving the fact that Carter is from Georgia. Hard for Tennessee fans to congratulate a Bulldog, but we. <laughs> great, that was a great job. See Dana Giovanella, one of our judges there, has just stepped out. Here we have you know, Shooter Cash came in here, Justin Herger. 79 points out of first place. They are also I tell like you Carter what, Turner, uh, hailing from the state of Georgia.
Yep, this is Cash with Justin Hergert. And just like Carter Turner a moment ago, these guys are also hailing from the state of Georgia. There's a lot of cash sticking out of there also. Rearrange the decoys. Now he's sticking back up there again. You know, John Carter, when he walked out there, he walked backwards the whole way. A little background here on cash for those of you that follow the Super Retriever series on a pretty consistent basis may uh, know a little bit about some of these names I'm about to mention here. Cash, cash is a Mason and Rain puppy. He was born in March 2017 at the home of Elaine and Mitch Mitchell. Cash became a part of the Southern Way Retrievers program when he was six months old, and he's been with the program ever since. I like the name of that kennel, Southern Way. Tell you what, this dog is intense. Nice Looks like we now have no bird there. May have been a communication breakdown. I know Matt was calling for it, but. I'm sure we'll get an explanation of what occurred there in just a second. Well, he's not retrieved a bird, so nothing's really happened other than just having to do it all over again. Great look at the Thor boat there. Justin's going to get to step back there to the holding line and wait. Something was going funny there because they not only had trouble getting the right gun to shoot, the middle gun, they were really waving kind of frantically. So I'm not sure what yeah. communication breakdown they have, but they're going to have to shore that up a little bit. While they're talking to Justin, guys, I was reading some of the stuff he wrote. I found this interesting, is that he said, um, even though Cash has been doing this for a long time, he won't load up in the truck unless you tell him each and every time. We've been doing this for years, and yet every time you open the door to the trailer or drop the tailgate, he stares at you with a face like, you want me to get in there? <laughs> <laughs> 
Did he tell us this dog is this dog a field champion? Uh, don't know. Let me check. I thought he said this dog might be qualified for the Open National Championship, and I'm just not. No. Okay. I was mistaken there. Looks like the judges are going to take advantage of this break off, so I'm going to have them rebird for a second. So of course, after we get this situation here resolved, we will have uh, Cash and Justin Hergert, and then we will have uh, Legend and Bobby Wills, Hatch and Lyle Steinman. Cappy and Carter Turner, and then of course we'll go back and get that amateur that had to run a second time, Huck and Brian Broussard. Yeah, they will be coming up very last here. J. Paul, y'all were mentioning the wind earlier, and I just keep looking out there at that fountain and the wind direction keeps changing throughout the day. Yeah, we've had it shift a lot. I mean, you can see it's blowing really, really hard from right to left right now. It started out at our backs, and at one point it was actually coming a little bit left to right from behind, but now hard right to left. Judges are doing a great job here. This wind, and look, it's changing again, even as we speak. So it's kind of swirling around today. I mentioned the dates for next year's Crown Championship earlier, and some people may have been listening and didn't have a pen and paper handy or didn't have their cell phone handy to enter it in their calendar. So I'll, uh, I will uh, read it out to all of you again. If you're interested in when next year's Crown Championship will be, our Super Doc Crown will be October 24th through the 27th, and our Retriever's Crown Championship will be October 28th through November 3rd, right back here in Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana. and as J. Paul said, for many years, the Crown Championship was that Halloween weekend. It was been a little bit earlier, a couple years now, including right now, but next year will be a few weeks later at the end of October. See Carol tossing the birds there. Frank just got a couple of bonus retrieves, picking up those two watermarks, and now got them reburdened, and she's cleaned it all up. We're gonna have Justin come back up to the line. Cash came into this series 71 points out of first place. So he's got some ground to make up, but I'll tell you what, the test that we have here, it is 100% possible. Started to test off. All that call in there. Pat, I can tell you from experience, some of these dogs that are hunting dogs and hunt test dogs as well, when you start doing all that calling like that, it, it raises their blood pressure. It really gets them <laughs> amped up. Here, Justin tells, remind him to sit. Of course, at this point, Cash comes out of the holding blind. He's out of the dog blind. He is not disqualified, but 
do take a 25 point penalty and you've got to attempt to put your dog back in the hide. Did he even look at that bird? Didn't even look at it. He was intently watching Justin. Hmm. I don't think we've had anybody have their dog come out during the test. No, we haven't. have to put him back. Now that you say that, you've probably jinxed somebody. It'll happen <laughs> three times. <laughs> I sure hope not. You just gave the retriever equivalent of, this field goal kicker is perfect, and then he misses the very next one. The announcer's curse by J. Paul Jackson. Don't do that to me. Ooh. He's looking out there trying to find it. Come on, bird. Boy, he's... Or just now, this shirt. is the first time. I bet you he sent for the long bird. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Boy, Because he never looked at the short one. Wow, so be. Okay. Did he get it? Oh, I thought he had it. No. Yeah, the tail is usually a really, really good. He's gonna invitation. get it now, though, isn't he? Whoo, whoo, whoo. Yep, he dug it out. Wow. Yeah, I thought he had it. And I looked over at you, Pat, and you were shaking your head. I thought he broke down, and he did. And he looked over at that le at the poison bird holding blind, but went on. I didn't have a good look. Did he come out of the blind and put his hand down and send really far? I heard the big firm no, say. No, he just sent him hard. I think he still had the shotgun pointing out there. Hmm. Well. off on that blind. Well, he's right at the critical point here. He's made a little break in the direction of the poison bird, but he gave a left-hand silent cast to set up the re-entry situation. He's gotta come up with a right here, but my guess he'd give it a right and then come back with a left. Yep. Is he? There, watch this. There goes the big verbal. He played the leftmost part of that corridor, set him up with a big verbal left back, trying to punch him out in the water. After watching Carter come so far up here, are you a little bit surprised that Justin hasn't made that move? Yeah, I, I guess you. I am. But I'll tell you what, I can see ripples. This dog's swimming. If he was up here, he'd see him right now. I, I'm not sure he can. Uh, but I can. Nope, no. to the right. Can you see him on the... Yep. Well, yep.
couldn't have done that better. He set that up perfectly. I wonder if, okay, look at him. He was starting to get out. He went with a big walking silent cast. Trying to really run it out. I don't out know if the dog moved on that there. cast. I think he's still looking at him. There he went, there, there he went. Oh! Well, he's trying to, he's trying to make a real statement here. I mean, that dog took the cast and he had it picked well. And he's just trying to finish this blind and keep him because he's got a good chance of really coming in. I call this coming in the front door. In other words, you, you, you swim the whole way there and you put him on the peg. Well, we have not seen a dog there yet. I think. Now this guy's targeted the far end of the pond. Well, he's decided to move up here now to handle. Looks like he's bending in. Man, he's that fade looks like it's just about perfect for my angle. It's really hard to tell though because we're all oh, to our he, left. No, he's he's gonna be just fine. Now you just gotta make sure you don't do anything stupid when you get out of the water. Look at him hold see how he's shading his eyes, he's really trying to focus. You're trying to read their their stroking pattern because it's hard with all that glare. Oh, right it's, now. And that that distance. No clapping yet. He's got more work to do. But pretty pretty strong. Yeah, it's not over yet, for sure. While we've seen several competitors that are previous crown champions or have been at least to the crown before, this is actually Justin's first appearance here in the crown championship. Tell you what, this is a very, very nice young man too. And dogs have real talent. I mean, he... Yeah. As Pat said a moment ago, still work to be done, but that blind was very impressive. Well, he's impressed me with his handling ability just as much as his dogs have impressed me with their skill. See, he knows it's not over. He also doesn't want to let something really, really bad happen now and have that dog slip up as you saw him give him that come in. While he's coming back, too, I want to give a shout out to my baby sister, Jill. She's been watching today, and Pat and David, Jill says, tell you guys hi, and that she thinks we're doing an excellent, excellent job. Love you, little sis. Well, thank you. Grateful that your sister Jill's watching as we are grateful that everyone is tuning in here today. Amen. Getting a lot of text messages about pictures of people watching it saying, tuning in as always. Grateful that everyone is watching these great dogs compete here this weekend.
Alright, so the blinds are done. We've still got three birds to go. As Pat said earlier, yeah, we all thought this thing might be won and lost on the blind, but it's going to be the marks. It's going to be the marks. It's going to be the marks, yep. <laughs> One down. Does he still have this bird right in front of him to pick up? or did he Yeah, pick he still got that bird. Remember, he just kicked the bird dog off. The dog never saw it splash because he was so, Cash was so intent on him and uh, it allowed him to get what would normally be the go bird first. So now he's got this flasher out in the middle and you can bet, you see him, he's letting the dog hold that. He's wanting him to really, really settle. You can bet he's trying very hard to get him to take a look out there and see it. Check down. He's really taking his time to talk him into it. Looks to me like Cash might be looking a hair. I couldn't tell from my vantage point. Looks like he was a hair to the right. Yeah. Pat's scratching his head. I don't think he can quite figure out which way he's going either. The danger. Oh, got it. He started a little right for a minute. Looked like he was going he was doing a big sell job up there because we don't think that dog ever saw that bird. Well, let me tell you, he got the dog to take his checkbook out and make the purchase, it looks to me like. Well, one. <sighs> one bite at a time. Here we go. I'm going in the right direction. Yeah, he's in a good place. Now, I've had a hard Boy, he's time looking over there. Bird. He's Boy, looking he over like there. He knows exactly Come where on. he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. Woo! That was powerful. Well, I'll tell you what, Carter put the pressure on him with that last run, but he stepped up and answered. This is going to be close. Huh? Kind of like what Oklahoma just did. <laughs> okay. It came back and right in the last minute. Let's see what happens here. Wow. You got to be impressed with the handling that's going on at this event. Definitely am. He just did a wonderful, wonderful job. You know that, Jay Paul, you were right. Carter came out here and put the pressure on, and Justin responded. So we'll see if others can as well, and we'll see what the judges thought of that run later when we get all the scores. This is competition at its best, people. Dog of the line now, legend with handler Bobby Wills. Interesting fact for you two gentlemen here is that uh, Legend is owned by uh, Tommy Smith, who's here in attendance today. Uh, Bobby won the 2010 Crown Championship with a dog named Colt, who was also owned by Tommy Smith. So, could it be a second time for Bobby and Tommy? We will see. No, I'll tell you, Tommy, he absolutely loves this game. He's made a huge commitment to it. Yeah, been involved in it with Bobby now for a decade and a half or so, and I really appreciate all these owners out here that you know, help make it possible. And Tommy is certainly, certainly a good one. All right, Bobby's got the. Now Bobby's telling him the mark. He wants him to see it. Did you even say mark? mark sure did. Sure he did. Mark. Dog saw it. Yep, he did. You know, legend tends to go big and go hard. I think Mar uh, Bobby really wanted him to see that and mark it because mm -hmm. he feels confident in him to go back to it and pick up that bird on the hill, one. And two, right. sometimes getting legend to check down can be a little bit of a challenge. Legend was deep into the 
uh, into the blind, he pulled them out just a little bit to get a little bit better look at these birds, especially the far right hand one. Well, this is something that I know Bobby trains on all the time. Appears that he saw it. Here's you, came up. Yeah. And this is what I hate about taking that gun out of the picture. Did you see him, as Bobby went to move the gun? He, he, he came it off of it. I'm telling you, Pat, most of the time, if I think my dog is looking at it in that situation, I'm just going to punch the gun forward and send him. I'm going to okay. give him a big kick off. Bobby well. sent him rather quietly, though. I, I think Bobby is very intentionally is going for the short bird. This wind has really, really been going, shifting. I think it's blowing harder. Using the fountain out there as our indicator, yeah, it's blowing right to left, and it's blowing a lot <laughs> and harder. And it's starting to really, really blow. Uh -huh. That may help keep the dog in the water, though. Right. Once you get by the poison bird, the wind, you're not fighting the wind to stay out in the water anymore. Wow. Also see the tree there in the left hand corner of your shot blowing. I think legend left to get that left hand bird. I don't think Bobby probably minded that because like you said, a couple of early whistles here really yeah. sets the tone and establishes yeah. control. Legend is a very disciplined dog. Bobby. Going a little bit right, but Bobby's probably going to let him roll just a little bit. Make sure that when he gives that cat, there we go. Legend knows that he's not supposed to have anything to do with that bird. Good correction there. Knowing this dog, I don't think that he was so much sucking back toward the bird. Right. He was just running tight to it. Goes with a double ah. whistle there. Yeah, Jay Paul, Hard you're to tell. intimately you aware of the background of Legend, given your uh, closeness with Bobby. So what can you tell us about Legend? So Legend has shown tremendous promise. Uh, from a young age, he was combed by a very dear friend of mine, Ryan Sizemore. Uh, in the beginning, Bobby's been training him. I don't think he did all the early work on him, but Bobby came into Bobby's kennel when he was very young, right around two years old. Super talented dog. Came out pretty right here. I'm I'll tell shocked. you, I just as he went in, I saw him make a little right, right at the edge of the water, and I was just worried that that's where the... He swam, he got in, he just turned right after he got in the water and came out pretty far I right. this is the fourth crown that the dog is qualified for. He just has won a couple of events. He just has a hard time putting together four or five good series. And you can see here, Bobby is definitely not getting what he wanted out of this. Like he's got him there now, though. You know, Bobby came into this only eight points. I'm sorry, ten points ahead of uh, Cash and 18 points ahead of Shooter. I don't think he could really afford to have the blind that he just had. You see him kicking the ground there. He knows it, too. Man, I hate that. But I'll tell you this, he'll be back, and I'm really, really proud of Bobby and for Bobby to make it here. You know, he's had a great regular season. 
the last several years, just a really, really tough go at it here at the Crown Championship. So. Very proud of his performance here. Tell you what, remarkable. To, you know, squeak in to the quarterfinals in 18th place, the last qualifying position, and then make it all the way here in third place at the finals. So Bobby's got a lot to be proud of. Of course, he's our partner, Lone Oak Retrievers East, and really, really proud to have Bobby as a partner and teammate. I've had several people tell me that Bobby looks like one. He's one of the most intimidating handlers, you know, in appearance. A lot of people call him Chuck Norris, <laughs> and, uh, but he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, and a true gentleman too. I did get a chance to talk with uh, Legend's owner a little bit. Uh, remind me of the gentleman's name? Tommy, Tommy Smith. Smith. Tommy, and Tommy Smith, that's right. I, I, and uh, well, he started like a lot of us did. He said, I just wanted a hunting dog. And then I think he has, but now he's got a bunch of them. And he got hooked. He got, when that hook gets set in this game, it's hard to get it out. How did you get started? I walked into a channel of water about like that to pick up a duck and went over my waders and I figured there's gotta be a better way. So I got <laughs> I picked up a hunting dog. But I happened to stumble on a group of amateur trainers in northwest Indiana and watched, went out and watched them train. And when I saw what these dogs can do, I said, I gotta do this. I guess to say it changed my life would have been an understatement because it's all I've ever done for 40 years now. And I'm still hopping around excited watching them. All right, working on that little short bird on the left. Well, he's got two good barks. Yes, he got dinged on the blind. He needs to be he, he isn't going to give up. He didn't have the blind he likes. I guess he probably gave up some ground, but he's going to keep swinging till the end. Oof, oof, oof. Oh, breathe in. He just didn't acknowledge the scent. And no, I have a, I tell you what, I looked at the fountain right then, and I think the wind went a little more downwind, a little bit, maybe not quite as right to left as That's it was. That's funny, he left like he knew where it was, too, and I think he's, he's coming does. back. He's going to figure this out. He just. Yeah. Boom. Where oh, he was. Yeah. Did you see where that bird fell? Right up tight to the trees. Yeah. Right, that was, it, right up in the shadows, actually, too. Yeah. Light's wow. changing a little bit. It? No, but I mean, it was right up and then... Snug up to that clump. That trees. was a very, very different throw than what we've seen for the rest of the dogs. Mm -hmm. First one I've seen pick it up all the way over there. And you're not going to wind it right there. Nope, right there. Yeah. That explains no it, doesn't yep, it? Yep, it sure does. Yeah, if, you, if you've been running dogs for any period of time at all, and you're taking a look at the way the wind reacts, when you've got a mark thrown, right in front of a large obstacle that can block the wind. Even though the dog may 
be running downwind of it. If it's, you know, the wind's coming dead into that, that obstacle is going to cause an eddy effect and make it really, really difficult for the dog to win that bird. See, he went under, he go under the arc, but he just kind of went over the top of the hill. Yeah, and Jim Joe's yeah, blocking and he RV. put the horn on him. He, he hey, could only well, Bobby had nothing to lose by just letting him roll. I mean, yeah, Bobby gonna, was playing gonna for get placement. Mm -hmm. So. We've had two significant long retired guns in this deal. How much effect do you think when these dogs are a little bit patterned to that and went unsure? Because these are the dogs that did the long retired guns pretty well. So I can see sometimes when they default, they may just keep going because it paid off before this. And Bobby's throwing his hands up there. He just can't understand like uh, we can't, how he missed that bird. Yeah. I mean, he went really close to that bird under the arc. Right. And, yeah. Jay Paul, how frustrating is it when you're a handler and you, and you know you're in contention and then midway through the run you're like, okay, I no longer ha probably have a chance to win this crown championship. Now I'm just playing for position, like you said. Now I'm just trying to finish the best I can. I can't even begin to describe it, man. I mean, to say, you know, what does a kick in the groin feel like? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's... That makes w winning all that extra special, though. Right. Oh, it absolutely does. Yep. You know, you, you, the, the first punch is when you run the blind like he did. You know you probably gave up some ground. Yeah. And, you know, so, okay, now we may not have a shot for first because you've seen at least one dog, you know, that feel like had a much better blind yeah. that wasn't that far off in points. You know, so that's that's the first shot, you know. that that, But then you come back and you stick your chest out and you say, you know what? We're playing for pride now, we're playing for placement, and dang it, I'm still going to try to be on the podium. Mm -hmm. And then that happens. You know, it's tough, I'm not going to lie to you. <clears throat> so our top two open dogs are coming up right now? Yep. This is Hatch with Handler Lyle Steinman. <laughs> Hatch is an eight-year-old black lab male. Lyle, of course, no stranger here at the Super Retriever Series. Seven-time champion. the dog that just really crushed the last setup. One of the really spectacular jobs. Hatch comes out of the blind there. I bet if there was a Cheeto in there, he would have stayed in. Well, he tells us he loves Cheetos. <laughs> He's the Cheeto dog. He said you he? could lay one Cheeto 500 yards out there and hatch it. And go find it. <laughs> Wow, look at that. I, 
think we may have all, yep, he had definitely had all four feet out. So he came out one time, he told him to kennel back in before he signaled, but then he came out here when... Did, did how, he? Go ahead. When he came out the first time, refresh my memory, I did see him come out, was it after he'd walked up to place the decoy? Yeah, when he first, when Lyle first sat down. Yeah, well that's 25 for putting him back in. Okay, is that what they Because the test had started once, once they okay, started calling, it. so yeah. And the question is, did he, you're wondering if he fully came out here? He fully came out there. Okay, uh, so. I called all four feet out. Well, can't worry about that. He's mm -hmm. got to get, he's got to do this yeah, water he's got to put that out. out of his mind and put it behind him. Hatch is an AKC field champion, 14 derby points, 3 SRS wins, and a hunting retriever champion, and he'll run the spring grand. Hatch has been with Lyle and Team Castile the last three years. Lyle says his strengths is that Hatch is a marking machine and very intelligent. Lyle's definitely playing the left edge of this corridor. I would assume he's going to put him just to the right of the decoy. And what set, do you think and of that strategy? Up, he's, well, he's got, I tell you, here's what I, what I like. He's trying to set up a left-handed cast into the water. Now, if you get it right, the left-handed cast puts you outside. Ooh, I don't mm. It looks to me like he went past that decoy on the left side. He did. Also. He did. Yeah, so that's, he I think that's why he called him in some. But I'm not sure he accomplished what he wanted. You know, you're talking. He's trying to flirt with that edge, but still be inside the goalpost. But it didn't quite work there, did it? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. See the ripples, but he. Yeah, I think he's in a good place to be. Yeah, there he goes. He was trying to get it just right. It just didn't play out quite the way it went. Now, I don't know if Lyle can see him or not. He's certainly looking hard. I, we can see him off the jib, but it's quite a bit higher. There, he just saw him. I can see him off the jib, and I'm to the left of y'all, and I can see him. And now I see Lyle's coming yep. over this way. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. You know, he blew that come in to try to just get inside the decoys, but then it broke his momentum up. And he was incredibly dangerously close to picking up the poison bird. You know, Lyle's won seven crowns, so Lyle obviously has a lot of strengths in this game. He did list, though, if he had a weakness, he said it's his eyesight as he gets older, so could be interesting here with the, like you were saying, the ripple off of the water out there to be able to <laughs> oh, see yeah. where's the dog at. People say that, you know, they're so difficult to see. When I first started deer hunting, they say, don't look for the whole deer. You're never going to see the whole deer. You're going to see a flick of this, a little flap of the tail, a little pop of the ear, a little splat. And then with the dog, same deal. Yep. You're going to see just a little commotion in the water. He's got him down there nice now. He's trying to, he's trying to finish it strong. And Almost trying to put him out at the same spot so he gets out of the water exactly kind of how Justin ran. Right, line. exactly. Yep. I mean, that's certainly the benchmark. And once he got over the dike, 
That was nice. He just had a lot of trouble there in the middle of this blind. Yeah, yeah but the thing is, he went around that decoy to the water on the left-hand side, so he didn't catch the saw. Now he came back through and he got him back through it the second time. But if I understood you correctly, if you go past it, getting that water out of the groove, that's 50 points. Is that what it is? David, is that your understanding as well? That is my understanding of it. And clarify. we know that he came off four feet out of the blind. We know the second time. Yeah, he got dinged here. Yeah, that's 25 points. And maybe the first time, too, if the test had actually started. So he could have been looking at a, we could be looking at 100 penalty points right now. All right, so Justin was 10 points behind him coming in. Mm -hmm. No. No, Justin was 10 behind Bobby. Oh, behind Bobby. Yep. Oh, he was 20 or, yeah, 29 behind Lyle. Right. Well, and Lyle was 32 behind Kathy. setting up, thinking about what he's next move. I just got a text from last year's judge from here, good friend, Jerry Day. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, how, how about this SRS? It's a different venue, but super fun. I've really enjoyed your field trial perspective on the setups and how everybody ran them. Everyone has enjoyed your, your and Jay Paul's commentary. Thank you for doing it. Glad to be here, everybody. This has been a, quite a delight. Everything I'd hoped for. Jerry Day is uh, still very popular in this sport. If you talk to a lot of people about, you know, who who's the first dog they can remember that was a, a, a real dominant competitor in this space, and everyone will tell you it was, it was Jerry and Super Sue. Right? Days in Super Sue. I know Super Sue. You know, you know what Super Sue and Michael Jordan had in common? Mm. Super, they kept coming out of retirement. <laughs> Jerry would have a Super Sue retirement party, we'd all go, and then next year he'd decide to break her out again. Then he'd have another retirement party. <laughs> we had a lot of fun doing that. You'll, you'll won't meet a nicer guy than Jerry Day. Mr. Jerry, uh, he is just a super guy. Everybody loves him. You know, if you don't like Jerry Day, you probably need to look in the mirror to figure out why. Yeah. And he's got quite a young dog now. Yeah. Uh, and the young dog's name is a boy named Sue. Going to the national, three-year-old dog, going to the national open in Oregon, field champion. Had a heck of a year. All right, let's turn back to Hatch here. Let's see returns from that. So, after seeing the early success, now it looks like all the pros are picking up this right hand bird pretty much. Say is after the success that they've seen, all the pros have been picking up this right hand bird pretty much second, but he chose to do it first, and I'm not sure what's going on here. He's out. I mean, boy, he just got himself hurt. Darn it. Yeah, that just took him out of contention for the win for sure. Boy, you're so high coming off that in the previous series where you just stomped it and just. I've been there myself many times. You know, I think the penalty points had already taken him out. I really did. I, I think he'd racked up enough points if they did indeed get him for not going through the slot. Right. Well, what's he have? Two more birds to pick up after this? Oh, yeah. This work's not done yet. No, mm -hmm. it isn't. Hmm. Deep breath by Lyle, I know. Know how he's feeling. So I gave a shout out to Jerry and uh, on his new dog, a boy named Sue, but good friends at Fox Hollow Kennels, Team Curtis, Andy, Wayne, and John, do, working on a boy named Sue. I wouldn't be surprised to see a boy named Sue at this SRS down the road.
Jerry competed in the SRS for many, many years and then stepped away for a few years and then came back a few years ago. Looks like they're going to the bullpen here. I don't know if they're recruiting a thrower. <laughs> Swap out our bird boys here, possibly. I know that the young men that have been doing it all week do have a, a little bit of a afternoon cutoff time. That's what's going on. Well, we should give those boys a round of applause. Yep. They, I, I've been told that this crew had to leave at 3.30. That is correct. So we're going to run. We're going to finish Lyle's run here. Then we'll actually throw the commercial for a couple minutes so that they can swap out who's out there as our bird boys and girls. The all our bird boys uh, might have to part ways. Rody Best is walking by me right now. Are you going to be a bird Brody told us that he and a few others are going to go be the bird boys now, since our bird boys have to leave at 3.30. Well, I'll finish. Let me do it. Yes, sir. The field. I get plenty of practice. I am now my wife's bird boy, so that's my main job. Brings new a definition to the meaning of our, our reporter in the field, J. Paul Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> we like to refer to them as avian propulsion engineers. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the current politically correct term for a bird boy. Yep. Well, I got that last bird. Just it up there. All right, so we're going to take a quick break here for a moment. Now that Lyle and Hatch have finished, like we said, we're going to swap out some bird boys. Then after the commercial break, we'll come back and we have two dogs remaining to run. We have Cappy and Carter Turner here in the open division. We also still have Huck and Brian Broussard in the amateur division. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to announce our amateur and our open crown champion. Stay with us. We'll be right back in a couple minutes after this quick commercial break. The Super Retriever Series Crown Championship is presented by Yukonuba. Sporting dogs give us everything we ask and then some. Their nutrition should do the same. And by the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission, teaming up with our community to bring sporting events to Shreveport Bossier City, Caddo, and Bossier Parishes. Margaritaville Resort Casino. Louisiana Tourism, feed your soul. Thor's Boats, drop the hammer. Splash Super Pools. And by Lucky Duck Kennels. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count with game-changing puppy fuel. Yukonuba Premium Performance Puppy Pro. The Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission is here to help you with your amateur, collegiate, professional, or Olympic sporting event. Centrally located in the Arklatex area, Shreveport Bossier is a premier sports destination, ideal for hosting sporting events of any size. With our wide variety of venues, including stadiums, convention centers, rivers, and universities, we are sure to have the perfect location for any event. Our team is ready to make your event a success. Visit us online at ShreveportBossierSports.com or on Facebook at Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission and let us host your next event. Two birds of a feather. We flock together every day. And I'll do anything to protect that loyalty. Durable, dependable, and downright dirty. And I'm not just talking about my dog. This five-star crash test rated kennel is lightweight, secure, and made right here in America. Loyalty goes both ways. The Splash Super Pool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA. And we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. 
They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. The Super Retriever Series Crown Championship would like to thank Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission for the opportunity to showcase our Retriever teams. We would also like to thank the sponsors of the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count. The Splash Super Pool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA. And we've been of this super pool and we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. The Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission is here to help you with your amateur, collegiate, professional, or Olympic sporting event. Centrally located in the Arklatex area, Shreveport Bossier is a premier sports destination, ideal for hosting sporting events of any size. With our wide variety of venues, including stadiums, convention centers, rivers, and universities, we are sure to have the perfect location for any event. Our team is ready to make your event a success. Visit us online at ShreveportBossierSports.com or on Facebook at Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission and let us host your next event. Super Retriever Series Crown Championship would like to thank all our gifting sponsors for their donations to our competitor teams.
They're partners, ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. No contract required. You don't waste that kind of potential. You train it, fuel it, unleash it. You feed nutrition that holds nothing back. The Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup. This is no ordinary puppy. And this is no ordinary story. This is the tale of a hero in the making. He is born, raised, and fed to rise to any challenge. Because he is no ordinary dog. He's a Yukonuba dog. Yukonuba provides animal proteins and high levels of DHA for a strong body and mind. Feed the extraordinary in your puppy and make your dog a Yukonuba dog. The Splash Super Cool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA and we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. In my Louisiana, the day starts at 4 a.m. In my Louisiana, every meal is a celebration. My Louisiana really makes me wonder. Ours is fast! With real life swamp creatures! In my Louisiana, music is a way of life. My Louisiana is sheer magic. From sun up to sundown. Till sun up again. What will your Louisiana be? When you find your Louisiana, you feed your soul. But if so, we've already run five of our amateurs. We've also run five of our open competitors in the pro division. We have one left, Cappy and Carter Turner, and then after that, we have to have a rerun of Huck and Brian Broussard, who started the day. Um, and once we complete that, J. Paul, Pat, I'll tell you hand what. out some crowns, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Excited. You know, I looked at this, and we, and 
we started doing what we call an organized confusion drill where there's lots of chaos and lots of birds, but this has taken that to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of times that's what hunting is, though, organized sure. confusion, man. I, I've seen it over and over again. You know, at the beginning of the week, you and I were talking about the game and the evolution of it. And I think in the early going, there were a lot of people that they would take a look at this, not understanding it, and, and they would go, wow, I don't really see the legitimacy of that as a series and a trial. But I'm seeing you shake your head now because when you see it in person, and particularly if you're really a hunt, true hunter, you know, this is real life stuff right here that a retriever sees all the time. Right, and I'll tell you what, my judge is, I don't right. want good jobs to be random behavior. Everything I've seen here, when dogs have done well, they're doing it for the right reasons. Dog headed to the line now is, of course, Cappy with handler Carter Turner. Carter has three dogs here in the finals. Cappy was actually the runner-up this year for Yukonoba Team of the Year. Um, and Cappy has been pretty much the dominant dog through four series here. But, Jay Paul, we've, we've seen years where the, uh, the dog that dominated series one through four continued that through and dominated through series five for just a, an impressive week start to finish. And we've also seen dogs that have led through four series and then just don't have it in series five and someone else can take the crown from them. So who's to say what's going to happen here? We'll find out in just a few minutes. I'll tell you what, leading wire to wire is always nerve wracking and it usually doesn't come out well. I mean, I've been in this position myself several times. I can remember an SRS event in uh, Northfield, Minnesota many, many years ago. Came out killed the first couple of series. Commanding lead, got into the finals, and wound up finishing dead last. You know, just had the wheels totally come off of the truck. So it can definitely happen. And we've seen that time and time again. More often than not, I think leading, you know, winning wire to wire, really, really tough. Cappy's first four series scores were 32, 15, 48, and 34. Carter hoping to have a similar performance here in Series 5. Tell you, Carter's doing everything in his power that he can to make sure that Cappy doesn't come out of there. I, Cappy just doesn't look super comfortable in that position. I think Carter, man, he's a great young dog, man. He's reading that all the way. And so if there's a risk, if they're in there too far, do they have a hard time seeing this right-hand bird? Sure. Yes, yeah. there's definitely a risk there. Yeah. Deep breath. <laughs> you, can see, you can see Carter took a deep breath, so here we go. Of course, with the first dog that he ran with Zeus, Carter stayed pretty close there to the mat at the line. And then with the second dog that he ran, Shooter, on certain occasions he came out far left so that he could see his dog a little bit better. Mm -hmm. We'll see which of the two strategies he deploys here with his third dog in the finals. Carter elected with each dog to stand up and step up, pull the dog out of the blind for the send. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a relief. Yeah, he threw those hands out there like, what? And then when he I'll tell you what, look so at the glare right. on the water now. The sun is a little different angle. Now, I think the hardest bird to see is actually the bird you don't want to pick up, so. Yeah, that's probably a good thing, too. The wind has laid down for a laid minute. Laid down a little yeah. bit, but it still has a right-to-left component to it. Yep. It's not white capping out there anyway right now, but it's going pretty good. Did you see him pull his uh, backup whistle out of there? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've watched him 
This is the first series you've tuned into. He's got one whistle in his on the lanyard and another whistle in his hand. And Carter has used that switching technique very much to his advantage. I think it's something he does in training. Okay, so his dog's making a move towards the poison bird. He went right to the bigger whistle on his first. Looking good here. Got him set up pretty well. Boy, he's ready. Got by it on the correct side. And look, even though the dog was way left, he gave him the left. Oh! <laughs> and what Carter he, has decided to oh. get on top of the boat. <laughs> look at this. Carter jumps. Tough, tough to walk the cast out, though. That first step's a doozy. Saw a little athleticism off. from Carter there, too, mounting that boat. Look at I can see the dog, I think. I can, too. A smart move here on the third time. Now are you going to move? I tell you, this kid is a brilliant handler. I wonder if he thought of that earlier and just didn't well, want to do it to the end because yeah. he wanted to wait when everyone else had already gone and then pull it out of his pocket. <laughs> you talk about pulling a rabbit out of your hat. Yep. <laughs> do you think it's a possibility that the Thor boat is going to be the the determining factor in <laughs> winning the championship. Wouldn't shot. that be something? <laughs> we might have to turn that into the traveling trophy. But I never would have thought somebody would have been swinging the lake hammer trying to make the win here. Yeah, he's giving lake hammer a whole new meaning right now. Mm -hmm. ah! What a great picture, huh? Yeah. Well, I would have loved to do it, but I don't think I could have pulled that one off. So if you're Brian Broussard over here in the holding line and you're watching, you're like, do I do, I do the same thing? <laughs> oh, got a bad kid. A bad turn there. But there, but there's a little bit of a disadvantage, I think, once you get out got there. Got the correct turn yeah. there. I mean, he got, he, it, it gained him some visibility. Oh, and look at this cast. Look at this. But he's keeping him in the water. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good place to come out no. at. We'll see. Holy uh, smokes. There you go, there you go. Boom. I got it. <laughs> wow, what a smart move. Man. Well, well guys, I'll tell, you what. I'll tell you what. He may have just picked up his first sponsorship and endorsement in four nights. <laughs> I think you'll be seeing our logo on his handler's jacket next year. Because he's definitely coming back to this. I event. thought that was a, it's literally a casting deck. <laughs> and wow. not casting for fishing either. <laughs> <laughs> when he turned around at first, I was like, what is he doing? And then I'm like, oh. Uh, I heard a thud. I thought somebody fell out of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> and I looked up and... <laughs> well, he definitely used it to drop the hammer then, guys. <laughs> wow. Is that where you say, hold my beer? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and watch this, boys. <laughs> well, I tell you what, though. You, he's got still work to do. Yeah, it's not done. He's picked up one mark and he's had a, a nice solid blind. He didn't want anything to go crazy here in the return. <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys. Did you see Leah Spivey in that boat when he jumped in and I Carter think jumped, she was like, what are you doing? <laughs> He went in, I thought she was about to come out. I know. Does he everybody roll? Okay, she take a look there. Out. See what he did? See, he's standing right there. He took a, a big leap into the front of that boat and cast off that deck, and it just gave him. I mean, that's I a know, hell of a move. Three man. foot, three, three and a half feet of elevation to see. Got to give a shout out to my buddy Jamie Tankersley, who's been listening to us, said it was really interesting. He was in, enjoying it. I hope he's still able to watch. Of course, Jamie's had. Owned multiple, multiple dogs that I've handled over the years here at the uh, Super Retriever Series. Great names, Mully Red, Angus, Ryder. I guarantee you he's going to get a big, big kick out of that. Look at her laughing. <laughs> She's laughing, <laughs> smiling. <laughs> well, 
Well, he's still got three birds to pick up. He, Let me take yeah, some. Yeah, he does. He does. He's exactly. giving us something to talk about, to be sure. He's going left. Dog wanted, wants to look right a little bit. He's got to make sure he doesn't jump in the water early. And on the right, he's got to talk him over. More at where the gun stood is what he's looking at, where the th throw came from. Tell you what, he's having to work him a little bit here. We pulled the trigger. Let's see what he's got here. <clears throat> yeah, I think he's in a good spot. Yeah. Nice place to be. Well, yeah, you heard him that dog. It didn't take long at all. But he had to do some work. There was a conversation going on up there. You know what, love? Got it too. Yeah, this is one of those cases where he was smart enough not to even ask about it or bring it up or ask for permission. I'm a firm believer that there are lots of times when it's better to seek forgiveness than ask for permission. <laughs> Always better to ask for forgiveness than permission. And that's what he did right there. Yeah, Amen. he did. Because there's a really good chance if he were thinking that earlier and he'd ask the judges if he could have done it, they would have said no. I sure as heck would have never thought of that. In a court of law, they have to determine if it's premeditated or not. That's what we have to wonder <laughs> if Carter's <laughs> boat jump was premeditated. All right, come on now. Come on. Uh-oh. 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 There's the handle. Ah! There's the handle. the handle in on this bird more than most people have. Still got oh, one more no. to go. Here, that mm -hmm. one was tied up to the trees too. Yeah. But he he checked down halfway and came back into the into this this short bird or down to the edge of the water near the short bird, I would should say. It wasn't hmm. quite as far behind it either as Legends was. I think that was a smart move on his part. Wow. It's certainly gonna make this interesting, isn't it? down to this. You've got to think to have a chance for the win because Justin had a really nice sure did. Sure did. blind. Of course, Carter had a really good blind earlier too. Yeah. It just wasn't nearly as wet. You've got to think though if he's got a chance to get the win, he's going to have to pick this one up. Clean. Yeah. I don't know that that handle put him out of it. But a handle on a bad bird here probably would. Happy. To say this is for all the marbles would be pretty accurate. There's a firm sun. Can you see that bird sitting up out there? No, I don't. I see a spot there that, but I don't see the bump, the bird itself. He came out, he made a left hand move. Carter's willing him over there. Oh, come on, move but he's left, climbing turn left, right. Turn left. Hmm. All right. He broke this. down. Look at this. Check down. Gonna get it here. Oh, yeah. And he got it. You got it. <laughs> wow. All right. How this he had a lead. Close. He had a bit of a lead coming in. <clears throat> he had a bit of a lead coming in, and we've seen some good runs here today. We've yeah, we seen have. Justin and Cash put up a, an impressive performance. We've seen Carter put up an impressive performance with both Shooter and Cappy. You know, guys, so many times. <laughs> You have a really good idea of you know what the ordinal is going to be or the placement. You may not always know who the winner is, 
But you got an idea of, you know, who you think it's going to be. Man, a lot of time has elapsed. I can remember bits and pieces of those earlier runs. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I have no clue who's going to win this thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I know they're, you know, I would say that Carter's first dog that he, he ran, you know, he's probably not going to be in there, but just don't know. I mean, I really don't. All right. Give me your score just on the right hand bird. Just, just off the top of your head. And I didn't say their score, 32. I said your score. 32 on the right hand bird? Yeah. Okay. So if you were watching earlier today, this was supposed to be the first dog that ran, Hank and Brian Broussard. We had a situation where And when he got there, the bird boy had forgot to put a bird down. Right. So there was no bird. Correct. Uh, well, as Hank came back in, he picked up the poison bird. So then there was a discussion of how do they handle this? They're going to have a rerun. They're scored him from. He will be scored from the point when he picks up the blind and brings it back. So he's already been scored to the blind. Correct. His he's been scored on one mark. In. One mark. He's had and one mark. And the blind, or the the retrieve of the blind, but he has not brought it back yet. Once he picks up the blind, he will be scored from that point forward on this run. All right, here I have a question. You've been scored on the blind. You pick up the poison bird this time. Repeat that. Okay. I'm, I'm trying. There's a rerun. We got to do the whole test though. We have to oh, do the whole okay, test okay, okay, gotcha, the one gotcha, mark gotcha. and the blind is already scored. You've been scored on the blind. But on if this you attempt, pick up the right. poison bird on the way out to the blind, on this attempt. Yeah. He's. Well, you can't. I mean, you can't. can't. I gotta can't, believe it. Even though you've been scored on it, that's the one thing you can't do. That idea hadn't even occurred to me. That's why when you asked the question, I'm like, repeat that? I'm thinking, okay, what, like, like, what are all yeah, the what scenarios? Idea? Yeah, what are the possibilities here in this thing? Here's the next question. Has he been scored in all his behavior in the holding blind already, too? Yeah, I don't think you can take 25 here. I think there's no way. I think the dog can do whatever the, the dog is all, at this yeah, point. Other. This is all window dressing right now. It doesn't really matter. Look, the Other than if you pick down. up the poison bird. Well, I don't think picking up the poison I think if you, man, I don't know how, you, what can you do in that situation? In that situation, I don't know what you do, because you're right. If you pick it up on the return, it's obvious it's picking up the poison bird. If you pick it up on the go to the uh, blind, one could argue I've already been scored on my trip the out the first blind. time. Wow. Uh, We'll see. Oh, Pat's just got a stick over here, just stirring the pot of controversy. Man. You know what? You just you... <laughs> so, so right there, Pat. This is exactly why. If I would have been judging, I'd have had him put that dang bird back right where it began, scored him on that blind. As and if he'd never picked it up on the way back, and continued the test. You would have had to make, take that what but you would have had to make that decision because there was such a delay in their discussion that it wasn't fair for this dog to have to sit there while they talked about it. So the they would have. At the well, risk I mean, of making a dad joke, we are here in Louisiana and every gumbo needs some pepper. So this <laughs> drama today just gave our gumbo some pepper, <laughs> y'all. You've been, you been saving that. Nope, just thought of it on the fly. I Probably because I'm hungry and some gumbo. We'll see. <laughs> Filet gumbo. Do you know where filet comes from? What they make it out of? I don't, but I'm going to find out here in a second. I believe it's a uh, uh, sassafras tree. I believe it's ground sassafras. I'll be darned. Okay, well. Here we go. Tell you what, if it were me, mm -hmm. I'd play this as left as I could. You're not going to get one thing. You're not going to get hit for right. is being outside the corridor. Right. So the only thing that could go wrong here is picking up the poison bird. And you have to retrieve the blind though. Right. Because you have to deliver it. Correct. 
Now, I wonder how much the judges, how much information they gave him on what he's been scored on and what he's expected to do. I'm sure they told him if they told me. Because if he was sitting over there listening. Right. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm sure they did, too. Yeah. But a lot of times they, they'll explain, especially if it's on a set of marks, you have to attempt to pick them up in the same order. Well, right. that doesn't really play out here. Right. At least that's the rules in field trails. Well, he's dead on line. Ooh, ooh, now don't. He's got a... Uh-oh, gentlemen. Okay, all right. Okay, he took a car. I don't know if he was just sitting that way, but he sure looked like he was looking at it, but he kicked out of there well. Yep. Yep, okay, well, it's not much different than the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he pop up pretty far right the first time? Yep. He did. No, he this did. is a pretty good rerun here. <laughs> but you got to get the blind. Where is he? Okay, there he is. All right. I lost sight of him for a minute. It's a tough look out there, isn't it? Yeah. Boy, these shadows have really changed the complexion of this test. I'm not sure Brian sees him. He's There's giving a... big walking, unless he's behind the tree from our angle. He's right here. You can see him in the middle of the screen because we have the jib, but I'm not sure he can see him. Oh, yeah. I see oh, there he is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here he comes. He's right next to the right hand pine tree. There he kicks. Right. Come on, Dad. There's not one there. I've already, I picked it up already. Boom. Okay. So now that he has the blind and he is bringing it back, now the judges Correct. on the return are starting to score yeah. Brian's run here. Well, I mean, there's nothing to really score on the return unless, unless he doesn't deliver the bird. bird. Correct. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is he comes by this poison bird if anything were to happen there. But well, I tell you, he's going to run right over the top of it. But here's where the dis one disadvantage is, is he's, he has retrieved a bird there, and it may come into play when you send for this left-hand bird. It may. Yeah, it's been a long time. But they've done everything they can do. Mm -hmm. What are they doing here? They're getting ready to judge. Oh. Okay, so they're picking up no, they're putting it out. Then he put it. He put it out. There wasn't a bird there for him to pick up. Okay. Don't know why. Well, because they decided the po they weren't judging it, and they were going to take what I just said off the equation. There you go. <laughs> well, once again, these judges have have tried to be as fair as they can to every dog. Amen. You gotta love that. That's all you can ask for. Besides making gumbo filet, do you know what else us for sleeves were originally used for? I, I've learned a lot this week. I'm going to learn more. Uh, that and the root were the basis originally for root beer. Oh, yeah. Okay. That I do know, I guess, now that you mention it. Okay. Now it's a raw test. Did you see what happened out there? Mike? Or David? I mean... They, there was no poison bird down. They intentionally picked it up when he ran that blind. So that, because they had already scored. Got it. They put it back out there. They put it back out there back. after he came back. So it is, does play a role in the marks, but didn't play a role in the blind. Perfect. I think that's as fair as you can be. Absolutely. God, he got up there, but he didn't come up with that bird. I thought he had it, and I was like, wait, there's nothing in his mouth. I'll tell you what, he's... Oh, yeah. He wants to keep coming down the bank instead of going up it. Well, he's found one bird in the water, and he's about to handle on this bird. I think. was a little bit confused. Yeah. I think that was a confusion pop. 
You know, and he handled right. Didn't he handle there or no? Oh, he's handling there. But initially, yeah, well, I, I don't either. know. I couldn't hear the whistle. Yeah. There he is right there. Smells it. With this lighting in the sun, that bird's a little more in the shadows, but I'll tell you. You know, Pat, you said that this test was controlled chaos. Just got a text from my little sister Jill, and she said she'd call it avian anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty clever, girl. This is what we say, let's do a Barnum and Bailey test. <laughs> but it's good for the dogs. We, and we do this with our field trail dogs just to expose them to a lot of distractions. That's really what it's all about. So he's going for the long middle bird. I guess I call it the middle bird. Some people might call this an up and out bird when you get a bird that's up and out of the water like this. And oftentimes the tendency is to not drive once they get out of the water. Well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a pop down there. You see the dog just gave a peek then. Yeah. Well, now he's on, he's in a... Get the bird there, though. He's right about yeah. at it. Turned out pretty nice, I think. So at this point, he's handled on the right hand bird. Got the left, far left hand bird to go. We're about to stick a fork in it here, aren't we? It's the, we got one more bird, and it's the. Yeah, but don't go away. This may be the last bird that, that we're about to pick up. We've got a lot more. Information. Oh, we got some drama. Some awards to give out. We got some drama for sure to find out who the winner is. Yep. In fact, after this runs over, we'll go to a quick commercial break, and then we'll go over there and uh, announce our winners. So uh, stick with us. It's going to be different than Retriever National, Field Trail National, because oftentimes now you'd have an hour to hour and a half of suspense while they poured over the all ten series trying to come up with a winner. Well. They've got the scores in the books already, so mm -hmm. there's not going to be a lot of discussion. They'll probably review each other's and make sure they're happy with what. What do they do? They take the average of all three? Is that what it is? They take the average of all three? They, judges? The points? Well, yes, basically. The judges, they all agree on a score. It's okay, not I necessarily gotcha. always the okay. average. All right. So before they write a score down in the book, they've agreed upon it. Yes. Got it. Okay. Yes. Well, you got the left bird clean, so that's the last bird of this event. <clears throat> yeah. But and there's with lots that more. <laughs> concludes the uh, competition portion. And then in a little while, we're going to announce the winners here in just a few minutes. So stick with us because we're going to know who our crown champions are right after this commercial break. You're watching the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship. Presented by Yukonuba. The Super Retriever Series Crown Championship is presented by Yukonuba. Sporting dogs give us everything we ask and then some. Their nutrition should do the same. And by the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission, teaming up with our community to bring sporting events to Shreveport Bossier City, Caddo, and Bossier Parishes. Margaritaville Resort Casino. Louisiana Tourism. Feed your soul. Thor's Boats. Drop the hammer. Splash Super Pools. And by Lucky Duck Kennels. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity. Support digestive health. And give him a training edge to one day flush. Point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count with game-changing puppy fuel. Yukonuba Premium Performance Puppy Pro. 
The Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission is here to help you with your amateur, collegiate, professional, or Olympic sporting event. Centrally located in the Arklatex area, Shreveport Bossier is a premier sports destination, ideal for hosting sporting events of any size. With our wide variety of venues, including stadiums, convention centers, rivers, and universities, we are sure to have the perfect location for any event. Our team is ready to make your event a success. Visit us online at ShreveportBossierSports.com or on Facebook at Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission and let us host your next event. Two birds of a feather. We flock together every day, and I'll do anything to protect that loyalty. Durable, dependable, and downright dirty. And I'm not just talking about my dog. This five-star crash test rated kennel is lightweight, secure, and made right here in America. Loyalty goes both ways. The Splash Super Cool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA. And we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. The Super Retriever Series Crown Championship would like to thank Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission for the opportunity to showcase our Retriever teams. We would also like to thank the sponsors of the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count. The Splash Super Pool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA. And we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools.
The Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission is here to help you with your amateur, collegiate, professional, or Olympic sporting event. Centrally located in the Arklatex area, Shreveport Bossier is a premier sports destination, ideal for hosting sporting events of any size. With our wide variety of venues, including stadiums, convention centers, rivers, and universities, we are sure to have the perfect location for any event. Our team is ready to make your event a success. Visit us online at ShreveportBossierSports.com or on Facebook at Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission and let us host your next event. Training the dogs is one thing, but training the people, that's really where it is. Because now they can be better to their dogs. Their dogs can trust them more, and they're going to be more successful. And uh, I've done a lot of coaching of people at nationals, and it's really what turns me on, is, is putting together the dog-handler combination and helping them understand each other. And, uh, well, success is bound to happen when you, when you can do that. Super Retriever Series Crown Championship would like to thank all our gifting sponsors for their donations to our competitor teams. They're partners, ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. No contract required. You don't waste that kind of potential. You train it, fuel it, unleash it. You feed nutrition that holds nothing back. The Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup. This is no ordinary puppy. And this is no ordinary story. This is the tale of a hero in the making. He is born, raised, and fed to rise to any challenge. Because he is no ordinary dog. He's a Yukonuba dog. Yukonuba provides animal proteins and high levels of DHA for a strong body and mind. Feed the extraordinary in your puppy and make your dog a Yukonuba dog. The Splash Super Pool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA and we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools.
In my Louisiana, the day starts at 4 a.m. In my Louisiana, every meal is a celebration. My Louisiana really makes me wonder. Ours is fast! With real life swamp creatures! In my Louisiana, music is a way of life. My Louisiana is sheer magic. From sun up to sundown. Till sun up again. What will your Louisiana be? When you find your Louisiana, you feed your soul.
Cody, count me in. Welcome back to the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship presented by Yukonuba. And we are now at the most important part of our live stream coverage. We are here at the awards ceremony where we're going to figure out who's this year's crown champion. So with that, Matt Emerson, our marshal, is going to start calling out six to first place. And we're going to know who in both the amateur and open divisions who our crown champions are. Yes, and I'm sure we're going to start with the amateurs as always here. So without further ado, 
We're gonna find out some results, Pat. All right, in sixth place with a total of 445, Brian Broussard and Huck. So, Brian Broussard and Huck come in in sixth. Total score of 445. In fifth place, with a total of 423, John Lamar and Smokey. John Lamar and Smokey in fifth place with a total score of 423. I'll tell you, this team has been ultra, ultra consistent. Team of the year, two years in a row in the amateur division. I'm sure, John's a little disappointed to finish fifth, but man, he is. Done a great job. I'm sure, we're going to see Smokey back here next year. In fourth place, with a total of 410, Jason Plaster and Cash. Jason Plaster and Cash finished fourth with a total score of 410. This is Cash's second appearance in the Crown Championship Finals. We're leaving here today with a fourth place finish. In third place, with a total of 407, Stuart Williams and Tex. Stuart Williams and Tex with a 407. Got a third place here. They pick up third, and more importantly, finishing in the top three here guarantees you an invitation to the next year. And actually winning the event now gives you a lifetime exemption, I believe. So these guys have punched their ticket to come back to the 2024 Crown Championship here in Bossier City, Shreveport, Louisiana. <laughs> in second place, with a total of 405, Ernie D'Antoni and Waylon. <laughs> wow, I don't know what that means. Well, Ernie D'Antoni and Waylon coming second here, so let's give them their moment with a 405. But like you said, Jay Paul, you know what that means. Yes, sir. The streak Mike, continues. It does. Mike Gibson is, uh, we're going to wait the total score here. But. And your 2023 Amateur Crown Champion with a total of 373, Mike Gibson and Blaze. Mike Gibson and Blaze are your 2023 Amateur Crown Champions. This is Blaze's first win. It's Mike's fifth. With four different dogs. Wow. Yes, sir. And he keeps the streak going that he was talking about earlier. We're in the since we've split into two different divisions, the amateur champions have always been either Ron Anderson or Mike Gibson, and that continues here as Mike, very impressive. Fifth crown with four different dogs. I really enjoyed hanging out with Mike on, uh, I guess it was day one, he joined us and uh, told us a little bit about his sporting history and quite a competitor. And a wonderful gentleman. Same wipe tear. Don't blame him, I'm sure it's a very emotional moment for him. You know, he's one with Shady, Jeter, Trig, and now Blaze. Hey, 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 Man is an incredible hard worker, super duper nice guy. One Family thing, man, Christian man, a lot of good things you can say about Mike. And I tell you what, right now, he's uh, getting a little bit caught up in it, and who can blame him? Yeah. I'll tell you, Mike was telling me he trains alone. He doesn't have, he's two and a half hours from any retriever club. You know, you can see it can be done. I know that's a frustration for a lot of people, but where there's a will, there's a way, and he's certainly made it. Just his consistency, guys. This is his sixth crown championship final in the last eight years. <laughs> Mike Gibson, we're going to talk to him here in a little while. Uh, but Mike is our 2023 Amateur Crown Champion, and now we're going to find out who's our Open Division Crown Champion. I'll tell you what's really cool about this, guys. You know, we were talking about, we all had an idea of the placements. We didn't know for sure. It's really hard. You know, it could have went a couple of different ways there. But the consensus was that Blaze and Mike had won it on the body of work and on the work today. And, uh, you know, Waylon and Tex in that order. So it's really, really cool to have it come down to this. No controversy whatsoever. These judges did a great job. And 
definitely shows here. Ready, Matt? So now we're going to announce our sixth through first place open division. Once again, our marshal, Matt Emerson, will read it out to everyone here in, in attendance. All right, on the open side, in sixth place with a total of 386, Bobby Wills and Legend. Bobby Wills and Legend come in sixth place here. Lots of suspense here, guys. Mm -hmm. A lot of suspense here. All right. In fifth place with a total of 366, Carter Turner and Zeus. Carter Turner and Zeus in total of 366 come in fifth. Carter's three dogs here in the final. Zeus finishes in fifth place. It can be challenging having multiple dogs in the finalist line, but it's a good problem to have. I think Lee Howard's going to hold him for the time being for him so that he, <laughs> Carter can bring each dog up individually. Yeah, sometimes you get multiple males in this finalist line. It can, you got to pay attention. They may be arguing who won the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in fourth place, with a total of 342, Lyle Steinman and Hatch. Lyle Steinman and Hatch. And fourth with a 342. With a total of 295, Carter Turner and Shooter. Carter Turner and Shooter finished third with 295. And they punched their ticket to come back next year, more, more importantly. Well, a third place dog coming in made a strong move here. This is, we're going to find out right now how strong. She did. Fourth place dog. Fourth place coming He was fourth coming in. Yes, he Justin was. Yep. I'll be done. Okay. Fourth place dog made a strong move. Well. In second place with a total of 246, Justin Herger and Cash. Justin Herger and Cash. Second. Big move from them from fourth to second in the State Paul Center. First, second, and third get to come back next year. And our, our winner gets to come back for a lifetime. And that winner, ladies and gentlemen, is about to be announced. But I think if by uh, process of elimination, I think we all know who the 2023 crown champion is in the open division. And we might remind everybody, you know, what you real, a lot of people don't realize that Carter came in here with Cappy with a 71-point lead yeah. over Cash. And so, your 2023 open crown champion with a total of 212, Carter Turner and Cappy. Carter Turner and Cappy leading us wire to wire. Doing a great job here, 212 total. And that's a hard thing to do. And they're your 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Champions in the Open Division. So you think the boat had something to do with it? <laughs> I can tell you this, Thor Boats is about to be sponsoring old Carter there. And Carter nice jumps in the boat during the water blind, gets a little yeah. more elevation and... Uses it to drop the hammer on the competition. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, well. but I tell you, all jokes aside, I am really proud to see it played a part in Carter decided to use it for me. You talk about a young man that was first, second, and third in the team of the year standings with three different dogs. He is kicked tail all year long, uh, won the Nike Award. How fitting for him to come yeah. in here and cap it off with a win in the Crown Championship. Well, fantastic. Hey, guys, David. Absolute pleasure, Pat. Enjoyed meeting you, both you gentlemen. Really loved hanging out.
and we've loved having you on the live stream. I know everybody has said you've just been a wealth of knowledge and it's been a wonderful week and we're just so grateful to have you here. Jay Paul, as always, great to be alongside you, sir. And I gotta tell you, man, what a privilege, and I mean this, Pat Burns, I'm, uh, definitely comes from the heart. It has been so nice to work with you this week. You were so professional and you did a great job commentating. I think if you go back and you look at all the comments, you're gonna see how everyone loved having you as part of this event and not patronizing at all. It truly really was my pleasure to get to sit beside you. Nobody can replace David Hamilton. Missed you those first few days. Pat, you did a great job and it was an honor to work with you. Well, thank you. I was humbled by that and uh, <laughs> I was just happy to be here. Thank yes, you, guys. Sir. David, it's always great to work with you, too, my brother. Likewise, man. It's been an absolute blast. And uh, this year's Super Retriever Series Crown Championship, ladies and gentlemen, just like this telecast, has now come to an end. But we want to thank you for watching the 2023 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship presented by Yukonuba. We'll see you next time. And uh, we'll see you right here in Shreveport, Bossier City next October for the 2024 Super Retriever Series Crown Championship. For Pat Burns and J. Paul Jackson, Shannon Nardi and our whole crew, I'm David Hamilton. Thank you and we'll see you next time. Time to buy you a beer. <laughs> the Super Retriever Series Crown Championship is presented by Yukonuba. Sporting dogs give us everything we ask and then some. Their nutrition should do the same and by the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission, teaming up with our community to bring sporting events to Shreveport Bossier City, Caddo and Bossier Parishes, Margaritaville Resort Casino, Louisiana Tourism, Feed Your Soul, Thor's Boats, Drop the Hammer, Splash Super Pools, and by Lucky Duck Kennels. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count with game-changing puppy fuel. Yukonuba Premium Performance Puppy Pro. The Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission is here to help you with your amateur, collegiate, professional, or Olympic sporting event. Centrally located in the Arklatex area, Shreveport Bossier is a premier sports destination, ideal for hosting sporting events of any size. With our wide variety of venues, including stadiums, convention centers, rivers, and universities, we are sure to have the perfect location for any event. Our team is ready to make your event a success. Visit us online at ShreveportBossierSports.com or on Facebook at Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission and let us host your next event. Two birds of a feather. We flock together every day, and I'll do anything to protect that loyalty. Durable, dependable, and downright dirty. And I'm not just talking about my dog. This five-star crash test rated kennel is lightweight, secure, and made right here in America. Loyalty goes both ways. The Splash Super Pool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA and we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. Training the dogs is one thing, but training the people, that's really where it is. Because now they can be better to their dogs. Their dogs can trust them more, and they're going to be more successful. And uh, I've done a lot of coaching of people at Nationals, and it's really what turns me on, is, is putting together the dog-handler combination and helping them understand each other. And, uh, well, success is bound to happen when you, when you can do that.
The Super Retriever Series Crown Championship would like to thank Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission for the opportunity to showcase our retriever teams. We would also like to thank the sponsors of the Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission. Your puppy only gets one start to set the foundation for a lifetime of performance at your side. Fuel growth and activity, support digestive health, and give him a training edge to one day flush, point, track, retrieve. So when the gear comes out, he'll be ready. Make every milestone count. The Splash Super Pool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA. And we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. The Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission is here to help you with your amateur, collegiate, professional, or Olympic sporting event. Centrally located in the Arklatex area, Shreveport Bossier is a premier sports destination, ideal for hosting sporting events of any size. With our wide variety of venues, including stadiums, convention centers, rivers, and universities, we are sure to have the perfect location for any event. Our team is ready to make your event a success. Visit us online at ShreveportBossierSports.com or on Facebook at Shreveport Bossier Sports Commission and let us host your next event. Super Retriever Series Crown Championship would like to thank all our gifting sponsors for their donations to our competitor teams.
their partners, ready to do whatever it takes. Athletes that pound for pound can outrun, outwork, and outperform anybody you're watching on Sunday. No contract required. You don't waste that kind of potential. You train it, fuel it, unleash it. You feed nutrition that holds nothing back. The Yukonuba Premium Performance Lineup. This is no ordinary puppy. And this is no ordinary story. This is the tale of a hero in the making. He is born, raised, and fed to rise to any challenge. Because he is no ordinary dog. He's a Yukonuba dog. Yukonuba provides animal proteins and high levels of DHA for a strong body and mind. Feed the extraordinary in your puppy and make your dog a Yukonuba dog. The Splash Super Pool is the original above ground soft sided pool. We've been in business for almost 40 years now. We're still proudly made in the USA and we've been serving our community in all kinds of ways. They're all testaments as to the strength and the durability of this super pool. And we've been serving the dock diving community for almost 20 years. The pool that they use is the exact same pool that you'll use in your backyard. So just remember, as you're watching these dogs fly through the air, this is the same super pool that you could have in your backyard. Splash Super Pools. In my Louisiana, the day starts at 4 a.m. In my Louisiana, every meal is a celebration. My Louisiana really makes me wonder. Ours is fast! With real life swamp creatures! In my Louisiana, music is a way of life. My Louisiana is sheer magic. From sun up to sundown. Till sun up again. What will your Louisiana be? When you find your Louisiana, you feed your soul.